Hey guys, welcome to episode 397 of the show radio. I am your host, Danny, aka Miss DJM. Um, I will be writing this solo with you for tonight. Um, <laughs> hi, Rob. Um, sadly, uh, my co-host, Andrew, could not be with me today. I mean, I IRL, or real life stuff and family, always comes first, and we're very, very adamant about that. So, um, here I am. Here I am. I felt like, uh, Sometimes we've we've had in the past where we've you know we we've tried to reschedule shows and everything like that, but we we also want to maintain some consistency here because I know a lot of listeners and a lot of viewers expect to um, hear us at certain points during the week, and you guys mean a lot to us as well. So you know here we are. I'm here with episode three hundred and ninety seven. And hi there, try look welcome thank you guys for showing up i don't feel so like nervous now like i have somebody in the chat i don't feel so alone i have never done this before if you guys ever known ever since i i joined the show radio um it has always been andrew and i there has been one occasion where he had some problems with the internet it dropped out and i finished off the show uh, without him and so it was just uh me for like maybe the last five to six topics which wasn't so bad but starting up and doing and hosting the whole show by myself with the news is something very very differently i don't know if it'll be as long as it normally is because i don't have my partner to bounce ideas off with but i do have the chat that is live here on twitch tv at the show radio live who hopefully if you guys ever want to chime in ask questions put in your thoughts i would love to hear them of course and then um, for anybody that is lifting, li lifting, listening after the fact, um, you can also find all of our show. You can um, subscribe to us on your Google, your iTunes, your Stitcher, um, whatever your favorite podcatchers is. Um, visit us at theshowradio.info forward slash listen and subscribe to us there. You can also catch us live and our past VODs on Twitch. As I said before, twitch.tv forward slash theshowradiolive. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry if I feel like I'm like speeding this up. I'm like so nervous. Um, we're also on your Google Alexa or not Google. Oh my goodness. That was so wrong. Amazon. Amazon Alexa. You can enable our, our skill in there by, hey, Alexa, enable the show radio. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube. We also put it up on top of there too. And hello, Nymphadora. And on top of that, we are also trying to push our Discord as well. We can um, talk about all the topics that we found here. You can check us out and join our server on Discord at theshowradio.info forward slash Discord. As you can tell, I don't know if you can tell my voice. I'm a little bit shaky. I speed up. I, when I'm nervous, I, I speed up my speech. And whew, it's just scary. But thank you. Thank you to everybody, to Rob, Try, and Empador for being in chat and, and having some faith in me tonight for this. So those those are really my initial thoughts. That's like how I'm starting off the show. And I hopefully I get better at this because talking to myself is so weird. And it, it's funny because I went to go grab my, my earbuds because I always, I, I obviously I talk with Andrew and I grab them thinking I'm like, who am I going to listen to? I have nobody to talk to, like, audibly. So why am I have this? And then just out of comfort and normalcy, I still have my, my earbuds in because why not? And here we are, 397. Whew. All right. So we're going to start off with technology news. We're just going to jump right into it right now. So we have, uh, let's see, first three things. Uh, what is open source hardware. So everybody knows what open source so software is. There is open source hardware now. So it's basically making all the blueprints, the drawings, the drafts, your CADs, whatever have you open and available to you to be able to modify, study, and adjust to your whole being. It kind of reminds me of like um, the whole push that everybody, I feel like everybody and their moms has a 3D printer except for me. And so, uh, so it's it's more of being able to create those things and having those things available to you to to build off of and i think that's actually a pretty awesome idea for creators um of the physical medium obviously because i in, in my mind i think everything should <laughs> should be available to everyone here and if i says i think of it as tcb recording live <laughs> and oh yeah we do do the the cosmic bulletin live 
Or if we did it live, it'd be like this. 3D printers are expensive, but it'd be cool to have access to one. It is. And you know what's funny is that when, when um, 3D printers came alive, I saw people who had 3D printers that were 3D printing other printers. And I was like, what? And I feel like, does that fall into the open source hardware? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. But I'd love, to get, I'd love to get into it. There's tons of things I would love to, to make and, and to see have made happen. And I, I don't know. I'm just not smart enough for that. I tried to use CAD. I have CAD at work and I'm just dumb. That That's where I'm at. Uh, next up is, is your VPN leaking your IP? And ways to check it out. And that's on top of that. Um, how to set up your own VPN at your own risk as well. So there, there's tools that are out there to make sure to, like for those that are very, very, um, dedicated to having a very anonymous IP. Uh, and it's just just that safeguard that some people like to have. It's not for everybody because not everybody knows how to set one up or where to go through or even know that it exists. But it's just always good to make sure to check that, um, that the VPN that you are using or the service that you're paying for isn't leaking your information. As you know, net neutrality is a huge thing that's coming up. Um, some people are on the fence on it. And there are means if you don't want to pay for the service for you to set up your own VPN, but you, of course you do it at your own risk because you don't have that same anonymity that you're paying for. And there's a lot of things that couldn't go wrong. You just, you just have to really be very careful about how you set it up and how you go about doing that. But if you ever want ever more information on that, definitely go check out our show notes. Um, <laughs> I feel like I need this very next topic. Hey, Shento, and make squiggles. And yeah, it is 3D printerception. I think I've heard a company starting to attempt to offer 3D printers as a service. Really? And hi, make squiggles. It's been a very long time. I hope you're doing, a, doing well. And thank you for the follow as well. But I, I'm feeling like I'm needing this because I can. My heart is just racing. Um, you can ask Google to help you relax. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm like, I have like a, my nervous giggle going on right now, but there is a service for your Google home help, uh, that you can actually enable ways to have white noise. Um, I actually had, I like living on the islands because we have natural white noise. We have the wind, we have the oceans. And last night we had thunder and lightning, which is beautiful. But for those that live in the city, you can actually use, if you didn't know your Google home for ambient noise or white noise. And it's simply to do this. Um, if you don't know what you're looking for specifically, you can just be like, help me relax or play ambient noise. If you know what it is that you're looking for, you can have like play, uh, fireplace sounds, river sounds, and you can literally just ask them play white noise and it should play it. And it's nice. And if you're one of your super fancy, you have it in all your rooms and you just got it all around you. <sighs> but, um, <laughs> oh goodness. Fedora. Um, I, I feel like I kind of need that now to, to relax. And it, it kind of, it's funny, funny, funny because I realized that I know it was a huge thing on YouTube last year and it still kind of is, but you can see it moving into the Twitch space is ASMR streams. And you have, you have them making a, I guess using Velcro to to make the fireplace noises and i have a friend who's doing it and she has like her background is set to, to like have flames like a fireplace and she just makes the fireplace noises and i find that so incredibly interesting so it's either you can tune into twitch and watch asmr streams or you know what you can have google home if you don't have well i guess that's an alternative if you don't have google home all right, next up is the AV1 video codec outperforms popular formats in testing. So this one is really, really great, not necessarily as a streamer, but this is awesome if you are actually um, producing your own podcasts or your own videos because uh, AO Media Video 1 or AV1 is an open royalty-free free video coding format designed for video transmissions over the internet. So basically right now the standard right now is X.264. I believe that's what that is. Why do I feel like I'm getting those numbers wrong? I, I know I'm getting it right because that is that's pretty much a standard for everywhere. Um, 
at least for beginners or people who are just like happy with just maintaining status quo, they're not looking for anything too crazy. That's what is like said for audio as far as like streaming goes, even in certain video recorders. But apparently this this new format is is beating out that it is see we're going to read it here x264 is a well-known video coder for the h.264 avc so the av1 pretty much is a repository when the av1 spe specification was officially released this past march 26 the coding performance av1 should be stable since the snapshot version the main focus of the one's development is on speed optimization to make it practical for use in production systems. So if that's something that you want to pay attention to, it's more, I would personally say that it's more geared towards um, podcasters and uh, musicians, anyone who is very, very heavy into audio itself. If you want to take that next step, um, definitely go out and check that out. Oh, I can actually link that for you. There you go. Um, <laughs> you know what's awesome? So, so Andrew, Andrew was awesome. Even though he couldn't be here, he did make the show notes for me. And he still has like little, little notes for me that he wants to go, he wants to go through and talk about. So he, in the last show, he was talking about his internet service plan and that having it to be a cheaper deal. Pretty much. I think that's all we ever want is anywhere that we can cut some costs, not necessarily cut corners, but find deals that help us in our everyday lives and our everyday bills is a huge factor. I think everybody wants to do that. So originally Andrew's internet bill, I think was like $80 for a hundred down 35 up. So basically what he did is he actually reduced his bill from $80 to 63 and he he suggests that if you use Optimum Online, you can call them and ask them if they have any promotions, and especially online promotions, and in, hopefully you get a nice operator that is willing to help you with that. And and really, I think most cases with phone operators, because he, he uses Optimum, I have a Time Warner Camber or Spectrum. As long as you start the conversation with the phone operators pretty nice, they're willing to help you because, I mean... It, it kind of makes sense. You're nice to somebody. Why wouldn't they be nice back sort of thing? So definitely if you want to give them a call, if you're in a service, pro service provider is Optimal Online. Their phone number is 1-877-936-4778. Um, and see if they can work out some deal. If there's some online promotions going on um, to get you a cheaper internet bill. Doesn't hurt. It really doesn't hurt. Even Like the worst they can say is no, really. But in most cases, they'll try to see the work something out for you. Hey, Gmail. Gmail. Okay, so this is funny. I got an email today from Gmail saying that, oh, your phone has, has the Google Assistant, blah, 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 blah. And so now, they, now I know that has nothing directly to do with this other than it's Google and Gmail. Gmail is currently coming out with a new design soon enough, which I think I've, I've had the same gmail look from forever like I, I think i've had the same gmail account when did i sign up for it because i i got gmail back when it was invite only only and everybody wanted it i think that was back in college so i want to say like 2004 so if i i've had i've been using gmail for 14 years Roughly. So now they're coming out with a new design and having some new features included into it say I'm, I'm not for change but it kind of depends like after using something for 14 years and it works so well like damn whatever you change to it it better be good but there is some services that I do like that I kind of am very appreciative of so one of them being is that it may or may not it's just kind of a slight little leak so you never know what the rumors are is that they may add self-destructive emails so basically um you can send it out and then it will just delete itself automatically from the receiver's inbox after a specified amount of time that you input or it's set to default at. Which, I guess there's some emails I would want to do that too. But I'm also a hoarder when it comes to emails. Like, I still have emails from 2004 <laughs> that may 
I don't know. There might might be a smart thing. On top of that, there's also there also might be um, a feature in there that will prevent the receiver from forwarding it, downloading it, and printing emails that you send. It doesn't say anything about preventing it from being screenshotted if you if they really really want to go that far. But at least that there's some options, I guess, from from preventing that. I wish there was that option that you can enable on your phone when you go out drinking with friends. That would be great. Yeah. For reasons. It would be a great feature. I guess Google's phones can go and do that somehow. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about that out loud. Okay, and also on top of that, we have a way to clean out your, your Gmail. So the... What is this? I'm kind of jumping around because I want to stick this all together because it all has to do with Gmail. So there are actually... Wait, no, no, not that one. Not that one. Oh, that's a new compression format. Very interesting. Snap. <laughs> it would be good. I mean, I know you do a lot of the video editing. Ooh, and of course, you do your podcast. So it's something to look forward to or to go and definitely check out. So actually, there is this article by Wire that says, here's how to clean up your, your Gmail inbox for hoarders, which is exactly me. And sometimes I think Andrew put this on me because I'm such a hoarder with certain things that is absolutely ridiculous. So um, there's something in this article that I actually didn't know. For somebody who's been using Gmail for 14 years, I didn't know that the, the source space that you got in your email actually was a culmination of... Uh, your Google Drive and your Google Photos as well as your emails. I thought it was just your emails alone. I didn't know that. So I didn't know there was a possibility of running out of space. So it actually gives you a lot of uh, the techniques and things to go through on deleting that stuff and how to make it really quick and easy, especially if you're a type of person that does it by hand because you're like... For me, example, I've had the habit of like, ah, I don't think that's important. I don't think this group, whatever in this date range is important. So I select all and I delete and I end up like forgetting it. I've done that one too many times. So now I'm paranoid and I do it like hand by like hand, just one after the other. This one actually gives you some nice little tools about or tips really on how to do it. If you're if you're the person like me that wants to go through it individually, but it'll help you do that process a bit faster so I actually started doing this last night and man I cleared out a lot of stuff I'm so I am so thankful for that but yeah and always um it also tells you how to better optimize it and use the features on Gmo which is something I am absolutely guilty of not doing of like using categories and tags to better uh filter out the stuff that I'm working on so I'm trying to learn how to be a better adult and and organize better because that's like, I fail at that. I, I seriously do fail at that. <laughs> um, in Nokia news, because I don't have the Nokia camera, but I, or the phone slash camera, I've always, I'm, I'm kind of like a selfie queen of selfies, semi queen of, I'm like a princess of selfies. I take a lot, like I don't take selfies often, but when I do, it's a lot. So I don't know what exactly that title is. I've, oh, but I've always been uh, kind of jealous of the Nokia's uh, built-in camera features on their phone. It always seems so nice and it's so functional. And and the options that it gives, it just, it's just not the same as other phones. And I wish that they have it. So Nokia Camera and Pro has been, uh, Pro Move is now available to download I says it seems online companies are trying to give people more control as they should, which is great and which is awesome. Sometimes too much control is overwhelming, though, because you have too many things that you have to do and you just want to take it kind of slowly. I notice that if they give you everything all at once, then I'm just like, <gasps> OK, that's way too much. That's oh, this is crazy. And I kind of just mentally shut down because I don't want to learn at all so I kind of like we're just gonna step away just step away and then I'm gonna go and learn this later but yeah so the Nokia camera and the Pro Move are available to download now if that is for you 
Also, on top of learning how to clean up your, your Gmail by hand, there's also tips in today's show notes on how to prune your book collection. <sighs> oh, Andrew, if you, whenever you listen to this, is this, are you trying to tell me something? Because I, I need a, I need a how to prune your video game collection. Actually, I do need that. I actually do need the book collection too because I, I love books. I love the way they feel. I love they smell. I love collecting them. But I do have too many of them. So if you ever need some tips and tricks on how to go about that and, and learning how to let go because you're a hoarder, but much like myself, definitely go check out our show notes. Let's see what Tri says. Do you think Facebook story sparked it off? Um, maybe. Like, that's, that is a kind of a quick question because Facebook is under fire for a lot of things. Mark Zuckerberg is under fire for a lot of things. And I feel bad for for Zuckerberg to a certain point. Because um, that's, a, a, that's a lot to deal with. And it's not even just that. So he lives on island. I, I mentioned this before that Mark Zuckerberg does live on island on Kauai that I live on. He lives on the opposite side of the island. I know exactly where his house is. A lot of people know where his house is because it blocks a certain beach access that everybody's fighting for. And in the state of Hawaii, um, we have a, a law that says that even if you're a beach home owner, all beaches are public and you need to provide, you know, a, a means for the general public to be able to reach that beach. And it, it's this huge thing. So not only does he get crap locally where he lives and he's had people picketing outside of his house because of these reasons, he has like the rest of the world on his back about all these other things. So he's just, he just hasn't been having a very good year. Now, for you to say that it, that it spark off, um, the Facebook start that off, I feel like a lot of these companies started this a while back and that just Facebook happens to be getting the grunt of it and is just the start of it. I think, um, I personally think that uh, companies could, could probably have seen this, at least trending. Um, it was going to be coming to this point. Because um, we do value our internet very much. We do value our privacy very much. But I, I know there's a certain level where your privacy and the internet, you give up some of that. And I've said this before, for the information that gets leaked out and gets put out there. Not, yeah, it is a company's fault that it happens and that it's collected and what they do with it and it's questionable to us. But it's also our fault because we sign up for these things and we allow these things and we lie and we say, hey, yeah, I agree to these terms of services that we did not read to and we don't know what we're giving up. So I think for some companies are trying to take some of that responsibility off of them in a way, but have control over it. It's, it's just an, it's, it's interesting. It's a very interesting time in the internet world to be alive. And if it ever turns out to be anything like that movie, um, not movie, the TV series, Black Mirror, like I can picture, if you ever watched the TV series, Black Mirror, um, I can actually picture our future being like that. <laughs> it's just really sad. Uh, what is this? Why should I prune my book collection? <laughs> Never. Because sometimes you do. I have like, I still have textbooks. I still have textbooks that I kept from school because um, for a certain part of work, they were relevant and technology changes constantly. So it's already outdated. So I got to get rid of stuff. There's an expected amount of privacy you should still have, but you should also expect to lose some of your privacy. Yeah, that expectation of losing some of your privacy, that still shocks so many people. And they still get so upset about it. I try, like, I hate it. Yes, I do hate it. I think it's wrong still, but I still signed up for it and I still have to expect it. Now, when it comes to my personal, like, PII, my personal um, information, like my social security number, credit card, or, or home address, yeah, that, that upsets me, period. Oh, my goodness. If any, any institution or company or whatever gets my social security number out, I don't know. I really don't know. Those are like number one sites. If it's because it's your social security number. If it's my phone number or my email, I'll be mad, but I already have it out there. <laughs> so there's that. 
Alright, continuing on. Um, speaking of selfies. Oh, wait, I totally skipped a whole other thing. How to repair your electronics without ruining your warranty. So apparently, uh, there is some notice that's going out to six different companies. Six pretty big companies. Um, I don't have the, the notice that went out, but apparently it's gone out. That it companies cannot void your warranty if you decide that you want to repair your own electronics. So that if you still can't fix it, you your warranty should still cover them being able to repair and and replace it. Although that's not in full full action yet, so don't go out, don't go out yet and just try to fix your PS4. Don't be me who took their PS4 apart trying to fix it. Um, wait till the, there's official word out because they've been put on notice. These six companies we put on notice. It hasn't been mentioned about what these six initial companies have been yet, but you can assume that it's the bigger companies like Sony. Um, that got this notice and how they are going to handle it and put it out. But in the possibly in the future here, you can see that you will be able to ignore that nice little sticker that says, you know, void warranty of broken seal. It doesn't. I, I kind of ignore it for the most part because I like tinkering. So I kind of accept that. But if, you know, I can't fix it, great. Because I kind of have a PS4 here that I need to go and send it for replacements. Uh, people have a problem accepting that they're part of the problem. Everybody does. Everybody wants to feel. So number four says people have a problem accepting that they're part of the problem. I, I think that applies to everything. Um, some people don't want, want to accept that they're wrong. Some people don't want to accept that they added to it because everybody wants to believe that they are a good person. And that they can do no wrong. We're human beings. We all have faults. That's it. And I love human beings even if you have problems. Because I got problems too. Everybody does. Alright, now back to the selfies. How to use Instagram's new portrait mode. I don't know if that is anything important to any of you. I actually don't even use the camera feature built into Instagram. They also have really terrible filters. So I definitely don't really use it. I take my pictures outside of it and then I bring it in. I get it. You are good, Agento. You're amazing. <laughs> no, it's bad. We're all crap. We are all crap, but we're all really nicely shaped, individual, unique. <laughs> um, ten hidden URLs that help you rule the web and supercharge your Spotify experience with these apps. Um, Spotify. Spotify. I think I have been has been growing on me for a for a bit now. Um, and I'm terrible with uh, organization on a lot of things. Um, the, these are apps or web apps that are available. I highly suggest. I actually started messing around with this today as I was getting the show notes and everything ready this morning. Uh, these actually, the really great way, uh, of finding new playlists. I think that's a hard thing for me is finding new music that I like. So there is one of the apps where you can put in like a song and it'll create a playlist that is centered around this certain song. And I think it does a far better way of doing it than Pandora did. There's also another app in there that if you can, you can add friends to like a group and then you guys can compile and build a playlist together and you guys can share it and listen to it. There's a lot of great awesome things in there. So if Spotify is your thing, definitely go and check that out. So last on technology news here, <laughs> um, last week, if you if you were listening or you're able to check out Lally, you you found out that on my mobile data plan, I use a very excessive amount of data on my phone and um andrew was very surprised by that because i asked him what his uh, data plan was for the month and he says that it was three to four gigs and that shocked me because i use anywhere between 90 to 100 gigs a month so and i have an unlimited plan so i don't really think about how much that price is, is and i think depending on my location i mean verizon has already said in sending emails that i will be throttled my data will be throttled after like 22 gigs for the month but that is also based on the location and how congested it is in the area i live on a small island there really isn't that much um there are wi-fi hotspots here but it's not as plentiful and i and i don't really go out as often to these hotspots to use their free Wi-Fi. So it's either I'm home or at work and things. So he wanted me to use this app called Dataly. 
and I installed it during the show last week Sunday. Uh, and I had I set it all up, and I said I was going to use it, and I and I did. And he wanted you know an update to see what it is. So after one week of use, because I set it up last Sunday, today is Sunday, April fourteenth. This is what it's at right there. So that is how much data I used for the week from Sunday to Saturday. And I screenshot it, if you can see the time, 11.11, my time, my local Hawaii time. Um, I used 16 gigs this week. And you can tell Tuesday, Tuesday and Friday, I don't know what was happening those days I used the most on those days. <laughs> Nifidar says, I barely hit two gigs. I, I very easily hit that. So this is this is one week's worth. As you can tell, I am a homebody, so you can see Sunday, <laughs> Saturday, hardly any internet use. And Wednesday was because, well, I was doing a lot of stuff and I wasn't. I listen to a lot of music. I do. I listen to a lot of music or I have streams up. Um, I have background noise up and I have to use my data package. I don't have any free Wi-Fi at work. So if I use, I guess... That's a little bit less than I would use. I don't I don't ever gauge where I'm at on a weekly basis. Um, I guess I would say that's a little bit less than my average. If I'm if I say in a four week period, I'm using 90 to 100 gigs. So let's just go with the 90. So that brings me to about 22 gigs a week. So maybe I'm 60. 16, so I'm like four gigs below what I would normally or guess average use under, you know. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it helped a little bit, I, I suppose. I mean, I'm going to continue using it and compiling that information. But you know what I, I do find what is great and I accept it as a challenge, which is super, super weird. Oh, see, T-Mobile has a thing that with Spotify that doesn't use your data. So my music doesn't count against my data usage. Okay, so that's that's awesome. I think I think he told me about that too. And I think that's actually a great deal. But um which I have something else for Spotify coming up later on, which I don't know if you if you've used this yet, yet in Fedora. Um What I was gonna say, so there's a there's a little bubble that pops up if like I use Android. So using this, when I open up a certain app, there's a, a little bubble that shows up that will show this is how much data you're using for the app that you currently have active because it turns off all the background um, data that's going to be consumed by stuff that I guess your email notifications or Twitter or Instagram notifications, you, you don't really see them until you actually open up the app and you start using it. But as you use it, it starts showing you how much data you're using. I don't know why I feel like that's a challenge to me of like, you know what, I'm going to use as much as I possibly can. And I'm pretty sure that's not what Andrew wanted me to to use this feature for but i i use it and i i find it so fun to to just have it up and see how much data i'm consuming because i think in one session of me just using um discord i think i used like half a gig i don't know how i used half a gig because it seems like a lot just looking at uh at discord and hey welcome nay thank you for the follow but that is that was my data lee um, update. I'm sorry if I shock you people with how much data that I use and, and consume. It really is. I, I leave streams up. I love having background noise up. I have a hard time working without either having the company of presence of somebody or having some sort of background noise, whether it be music, whether it be uh, a TV show or having a stream up. I like having that, that noise. If I don't really have it, I am not as fully productive as I would like to be. I know that's a really poor excuse, but it works for me. And so that's where it comes out. And I'm so grateful for having unlimited because I don't know what I would do without it. I really don't. <laughs> so entertainment news. This is for Spotify yet again. So if you didn't notice, and I'm going to have to go and do this myself too. If you are subscribed to Spotify and you're also subscribed to PS Plus, you actually could be saving on your Spotify premium. So if you sign into basically to get this little bonus thing and, and it doesn't apply for just new accounts, it goes for older ones too. But if you sign in and you download the Spotify app on your PS4 and you have PS Plus and you log into that, uh, you actually believe, I believe it is a 10% discount on your, your Spotify premium. So if you haven't done that yet, I definitely suggest you go and do that now. I pay for the 
the family premium because I have a couple other people in my family that uses it as well. So 10% off is always a nice discount. It's like it, you might be counting pennies with this, but a discount is a discount and we're all about saving here. Uh, also into entertainment, I will also, I also found out about this new TV show, which I have to go find out where I can go and check it out. It's called The City and The City. And it's, a, it's coming out of BBC, which I love a lot of BBC. If you are ever on my personal stream, you know that I have a thing for Harry Potter and Doctor Who. So The City and the City is basically a TV series that there are two cities that occupy the same space, but they are, they're programmed or to and raised to not acknowledge the other, which is such an easy thing. It's like, how do you not, how do you program yourself to not notice or see this other half of the city that's occupying the space with you? But anyways, we're going to go back to this. So I, was, I, I was talking about uh, The City and the City, which is a new TV show coming out of the BBC. Sadly, I don't think I can watch it right now. Uh, when I go to the site, it does ask that, hey, you have to be UK, blah, blah, blah. So I, I know it will be available elsewhere soon enough. But like I was saying, it, the, the synopsis of this is that there's two cities that occupy the same space and that the population for each of these cities are somehow programmed um, to just not acknowledge that the other city that occupies that same space exists. And if they start to, then there's some consequences. It's it's very weird, very bizarre, but it's like right off my sci-fi fantasy um, genre and realm that interests me. So I look forward to watching that. On, on top of that, I kind of really enjoy a lot of things that come out of the BBC. I don't think there's anything that I've watched that... I didn't like so I think the light's too bright we'll go with that um so I'm gonna keep an eye on that uh last up in entertainment news uh Nicki Minaj's latest song Chun Li I had to listen to this a couple times it's not a bad song I don't I don't mind Nicki Minaj's music some of it is not is it from a book or it is from a book? I think it is from a book. I just found that out too. I think um, when I was researching it a bit more, you know, it was based on a book. And I don't know how I feel about watching reading books that are turned into TV series. Usually, if it's a movie, I'll read it. But TV series, I kind of sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. I don't want to watch TV series. Like, ah, oh, man, what is? There's another. There was a. a There's another TV series that was a book that was recent. It had. Was it Ethan Hawke in it? It was. It was also about a city, and the people lived in this gay community, trying to keep out these creatures outside. Wayward, Wayward Pines, I think that's the name of it. I think that was also based off a book too, and that was really good. I didn't read the book beforehand, but I want to read it after I watched it. Yeah, I believe that was the name of it. We were Pines. Yeah. I wonder if there's going to be another TV series about that. So TV series and books, if, if it happens to be a good TV series, then I'll read the book. But I, I don't really care to read it before watching the TV series. And yes, The City and the City is a novel by British author China Mayville. Sorry, really bad about butchering that name. It is. I like weird fiction. I'm sure you can probably possibly hear that thunder. It's really loud. Really dangerous. But um, yeah. So continuing on, Nicki Minaj and Chun Li with this. I guess supposedly is a Street Fighter inspired track. I'm not feeling it. I don't see that. Other than she makes, like, a what, one or two references to Chun-Li. And then she also does one for uh, Storm and uh, Laura Croft. But I think in the TV series, and not a TV, oh my god, I can't even think of the thunder. Um, in the song, she's also, like, mentioning how Chun-Li is, like, making me out like a bad guy like Chun-Li. Chun-Li was not a bad guy. Chun-Li, Chun-Li, or bad girl, bad woman, whatever. She, she was... An Asian. She was a good guy. 
She was looking for Kenner Asian, so to, to make a reference as if she was the... Uh, on the bad guy side, I don't, I'm not seeing it. And then I tried to pull other things from it, like, is it... I think so. I, I read it somewhere that she made that reference because, like, Chun-Li, she was the very first female that was introduced into to the roster. So maybe Nikki is just feeling herself and she feels like she's, like, the only OG female rapper, which to me, she isn't. I will always take, like, Missy Elliott over her. <laughs> Sorry, that that's my original OG right there. And I, the only thing that I can feel that is inspired that she could even, I guess, say Chun-Li is because of her thighs. Those thick thighs. I don't, I don't know. I don't see it. Um, the song isn't really bad. The beat isn't bad. But I think she's just using the name for the sake of using the name. But the music video was actually really, really interesting. I hardly ever watch music videos, so it was a very much a budget thing that kind of actually worked. So she, she shot the entire music video in selfie mode and just used her phone. At least I feel like she just used a phone. It was a very, very ex non-expensive and elaborate Instagram music video. And who, what woman is going to know her best angles than someone who loves to take selfies? And pretty much that's what it was. It wasn't bad. It was pretty good. There was something that was kind of questionable. And it seems like she probably did that all in one night. And I, I always picture, because I am guilty of this, like, when you go and get ready for the night to go out with the girls, if you, if you look really good and you're feeling yourself, yeah, you do take a lot of selfies. And that's kind of what that music video reminded me of. It was like, damn, I look good in this. Let me, you know, take some angles here, take some angles there, record some videos here. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what it was. It wasn't bad. It was pretty good. But I'm not, I don't see the inspired track. I don't see the references. And I think, I think there was a one point below, before she was, I don't remember what song it was or what music video. She made another reference to Chun-Li before too, but I think there, at some point she says like Hadouken and I'm like, Chun-Li does not, whatever. That's just being, me being the picking and probably shouldn't. But that is it for our entertainment news. That was short and sweet. I wonder if she had to get any permission from Capcom. Maybe. Maybe somewhat. But I do know that Capcom did take the opportunity to post... See, I can host your own ASMR video here. I'll just say nothing and then you have your ambient Google noises from me. Of just rain and thunder. Um... I know Capcom did send out a tweet that kind of capitalized on it and they added a gif of Chun-Li and I think they added a, a hashtag Nikki day. So they probably worked out something or they're just capitalize, capitalizing on it. And it's not like Street Fighter and hip hop or rap music has not gone like, you know, collaborated in some sense before. It's just, except that for her to name the song Chun-Li and, and then she has the, I think the cover art for something has the little buns, the chun -Li buns that she's known for. Not the Princess Leia one, but the chun -Li ones. Um, and I just don't see how how you can, how it's titled inspired, I guess. I guess that's what's kind of losing me on that one. All right, video game news. This seems to be a very bad trend that's happening, regardless if people notice it or not. So starting off with Terraria Otherworld has been canceled. So it, I was reading um, the forum post that they made about this and it's kind of almost sounds similar to how Amazon had to cancel Breakaway. It's just, it's that they, they announced this game so early and had such high hopes and high dreams that it kind of puts this pressure on them to meet these milestones and expectations. So after three, almost four years of development here, um, they weren't meeting their milestones and they realized that there's so much further um, away from their goals and their plans than they expected to be and you know the studios also has other projects that they want to fund that they want to put work into so it has been cancelled that is sad there's a lot of upset people in the forums um, 
it, it's just it's just happening and it, and it kind of sucks and hopefully maybe they'll go back to it they didn't say anything about what they would be doing with their assets or if it'll be something that'll be revisited um at any time in the future but it's very obvious that they have other projects that they want to take the money and the time and put into those instead um, in good news, uh, Yacht Club Games has announced that Shovel Knight, the Blue Knight, who everyone digs, has sold 2 million copies. And for Blizzard fans, Blizzard has announced that their, uh, this year's BlizzCon will take place on November 2nd and November 3rd, and tickets are scheduled to go on sale in May. I've never personally been to, to BlizzCon, but because it's so close to TwitchCon, possibility that i might never ever be able to go unless i make a really long extended vacation in california i don't personally see that happening anytime soon we'll, we'll see i don't know <clears throat> i'd love to go i'd love to go to all cons if it was ever possible but maybe i'll just be ever in your favor to everyone who is trying to go and get those badges be ready to hit that buy badge that's an <clears throat> oh my god i gotta drink some water first this is, this is usually a really great time. I wish I had like this weighty sound music of so just the past time so that I could drink some water. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is this is a very good one. I think a lot of people would be super excited to hear about this because it's a very beloved child that number three hasn't hasn't come out yet but you can get Shenmue 1 and 2 will be coming to PS4 and Xbox One and PC later on this year I know it's like a lot of people are waiting in anticipation for Shenmue 3 we've talked about it before this is seriously one of those overall well beloved video game series that everybody everybody just adores like you just cannot not like it i don't think i've ever met anybody who did not like the shenmue series and i and, and i think that's so incredibly rare to, to in, in video games there's only very specific games and i can't think of anyone else right now other than shenmue but shenmue 1 and 2 will be coming to console which makes sense because 3 should be coming out right after that or shortly after that so like leading up to it so for anybody who hasn't even gotten to know or fall in love into the series can actually start off from the beginning and and be able to to play it i think that's absolutely great news and i think let's see let's see if i can actually like bring this up i usually it's really hard for me to do this solo <laughs> but we make it happen we're making it happen i just want to be able to show everybody hasn't seen the gameplay trailer right now that is also available on there it's a great storyline and i believe when it originally came out it was like one of the highest one of the highest budget i'm sure there's others but it had a pretty high budget um and it was well received and it was a very expensive game to make and people were shocked by that and i think it really really paid off so when they announced shedmoo 3 it, that was like record-breaking when uh they literally broke Kickstarter to raise the money. I believe it was just over six million dollars, and that that was just shocking to have that all crowdfunded to make Shenmue three. So you can understand how well loved the series is. So if you haven't been able to play it, now your chance is coming to the current gen NPCs. It'll be available to you later this year. And on top of that, you'll also have Mega Man X Legacy Collections 1 and 2 will be hitting PS4 on July 24th. And then, and then I gotta go into this game here. So, Hazel Light Studios, The Cop Avengers Away Out, has sold over 1 million copies. Which means 2 million people have played this game. And I happen to be one of those games. So, A Way Out. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a game review along with this. I was lucky enough to be able to play. I did purchase. It wasn't sponsored. It wasn't given to me. I did buy this myself. Okay. So it wasn't. It didn't come from Hazel Light Studios or EA whatsoever. I was very, very determined to be able to play this game when it was first announced. And I and they showed it. I love couch co-ops um, with a passion. It is. They're, they're, I love it more than any PvP game that you can ever give me. So what first attracted me to A Way Out was the fact that uh, 
during the Game Awards back in December, Joseph Ferris, who is very, very probably well known now for his F the Oscars little monologue and craziness that he he went out on stage but it was it was very very memorable there was a point um that he started bringing up the price point for this game and it was like 30 dollars, and he had this whole f buy two copies hashtag going on um whereas basically if you buy one copy um i played it on ps4 um if you buy one copy, your co-op partner will be able to play it for free with you. And that is, it doesn't mean that it'll be local co-op. Like, this would be online. And it's basically to... I know on PS4 that as long as you had the friend pass um, and PS Plus, you just had to download the game from the buddy that, you know, that you're playing it with. And you guys got to play together. And for $30, that is, that is amazing. Like... You, if if you don't want to buy out the game for thirty bucks yourself, um, split it with a buddy for fifteen bucks. It is it is a very very beautiful game. It was very cool to play. Um, it's I wouldn't say it is as up there as maybe like a Final Fantasy fifteen graphics and looks, but it was still a really nice game for a budget for a budget game for fifteen bucks. Kind of like like Hellblade was. Actually, Hellblade is like a, a, graphically just a little bit better. Uh, gameplay, the mechanics and the controls are very, very, very simple. Um, it, ha it, is, it does have some quick time events into it, which is like either you love it or you hate it, but it's very simple. And, and some people don't like simple control schemes for whatever reason. I don't know. Those people are not me. But for me, I, I, I think that having the simple gameplay mechanics actually made the game a lot easier. It made it more fun. It added value to the game rather than taking away from it. Uh, that same, same thing goes with the, the storyline of it. The storyline, you can, you can pretty much guess what the storyline is going to be like based off of this. But is another element in the game that added value rather than taking it away. It didn't make it boring at all because even though you, you can kind of get the idea of what the storyline was going to be like, it's still fun because you don't know exactly what's going to be said or how it's going to be, how it's going to be acted out. But it allowed you to focus more on how the relationship between Leo and Vincent were built because you, it is a co-op game and it forces you to play a co-op game. You cannot play with AI. So you have to play together. You have to play with another person. You're building up this relationship, you're building up this trust, and you can feel that and see that in the, in this game. And you're not overwhelmed with having to pay attention to a million other things. You can focus on the characters, you can focus on their relationship, you can focus on what they're talking about and go through that. Um, and they go on these crazy adventures that you're going... Uh, riding on, on motorcycles, you're doing a car chase, you're doing this boat race, you're even playing basketball. Even the simplest things of just playing basketball. That was fun. And the I, I won't give it away any any spoilers to it. There are options where you can have the you know, you reach forks in the road where you can make different decisions. Either you can go with a Leo or Vincent, which they have two very different personalities and can make these different choices and they play out very, very differently. You can go either or. And for my very first playthrough, uh, we did choose all of uh, Vincent's. We're going to go back and do Leo's later. And... I liked it, I, and I don't. I don't think it necessarily will change the overall thing. Just how you play out that scenario. So it still leaves leaves me wanting to go back. Um, it, I got about five, maybe almost six hours worth of gameplay th out of it. So out of thirty dollars, um, that's like five dollars an hour. Two people, two fifty dollars. That's very much well worth your entertainment value. Um, the ending was good. The ending hit me. The ending was very. The ending was good. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to give away anything. I don't want to ruin anything for anybody. So if you definitely want to check it out, it is available on your console, PS4, PS4, um, and Xbox for thirty dollars. I I don't think you anybody will regret it. Just if you can just have somebody to play with. I'm not too sure if there's an option to. Maybe there is. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure to play with a random. But I highly. 
highly suggest it. I would personally give this this game an 8 out of 10. I have absolute regrets, so yeah. We're going to go with that. And... I always have, like, I have to, like, this weird transitions because I have to close out all these things. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, sea of Thieves content updates for this past one and Dauntless open beta May 24th. So, Dauntless I may or may not try out. I'm not too sure. Only because I don't need another MMO, but I think I heard a lot of hype behind it. But I, uh, well, initially, but I don't think I, I know anybody that continued playing with it. So I guess they're going to start going out and rolling out these open betas. If you're currently playing it right now, they are going to do two wipes before, um, two wipes, I guess, of all the servers. So I guess you lose all your stuff or your stats or, or anything like that before it becomes an open beta. I think it's been like long enough. I feel like this thing has been talked about for like a year and it only it has any hype or talked about it when it's going to be like, oh, we have this playtest here. Other than that, I don't really, I'm not drawn to it. But if you are, if I'm missing something, definitely let me know. Now for the Sea of Thieves content, let's see. Um, I had I had it all up here, but you know, power went out. So that's that's what happened. Open this up. Which I a lot of people have been digging this. I mean, I I'm not I, I'm not a hater of it, but I need more from it, and I need I need something that draws me in as like if I'm going to be playing it by myself. So they have a couple updates uh, coming up soon, and if I can just find where I highlighted. Where it is okay so the for the first content update they have the hungering deep which will release in may and it'll bring in with it uh new ai threats to the world and curls crews will have to work together to discover and defeat this threat as part of a unique event we'll also be introducing a number of new mechanics to assist players on those adventures and there'll be unique rewards that players can earn as part of the event beyond this they'll begin their weekly events program during may where they introduce mechanics that give players fun ways to play with weekly events and rewards. You know what's funny about them saying that? It sounds so weird. It's, it sounds so bizarre to me. Just how they reworded the same thing. Like three times in like two sentences. I have heard so many complaints about Sea of Thieves. I keep hearing it's the same thing over and over. Is it worth the money? I don't know. That's that's the same thing I hear too. And that's what I get from it. And that's why I'm staying away from it. Um, not only because I don't have like a full crew to set sails with. But there is, there's, there's no progression necessarily. It's a lot of cosmetic stuff. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. But if they bring out more content that adds that, adds to that value, then I may reconsider it. But for me personally, right now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't jump onto it. Um, let's see here. But in their summer months, they'll have two more content updates. So in the summer, which I'm not too sure what their summer start is. I'm assuming July, they'll have um, Cursed Sails, which will include a new ship type, and for Forsaken Shores, which will introduce players to perilous new parts of the world to explore, similar to the Hungering Deep. Uh, both of these updates will also include na new gameplay mechanics for players, new AI threats to challenge, and new unique rewards to claim. Um, oh, and they also... And we've also... Ugh, I cannot read. And we've also said... Uh, we always wanted you to do anything to separate our players. So, oh, we never wanted to do anything that separates players. So all of this stuff and content updates will be available to all players at no additional cost. So that's cool that they're going to be offering and doing all these things for free. And they don't want people like who can't afford it, not be able to play with people who can. I think that's actually cool. It really needs to add a bit more content before I want to even decide to give it a try. But that is the same complaints that I have been hearing try. So it's not... It's not anything new. I'm just saying away until later on. Um, Grand Theft Auto. No, wait. I'm just kidding. Nintendo's new hardware after Switch. So this one was interesting. So BBC did, did an interview with Takahashi. Um, and he had... He's... Oh my goodness. You know, I had these notes all ready for myself. And then my power went out. And it made it so much harder. Because I knew exactly these pinpoints I wanted to say. 
So Shinya Takahashi of Nintendo hints at a new hardware and, you know, kind of leaves us to start thinking about what's happening to the Switch. Because the Switch only been out for, what, just over a year now? So to be talking about new hardware, which um, kind of seems a little bit too too soon for that to be happening. So basically, qu uh, quoting him, uh, quoting Takahashi says, Nintendo constantly works on hardware, so we have been doing research and development, so you may see new systems sometime in the future. Uh, considering that Takahashi is a general manager of Nintendo's entertainment planning and development division, you know that you can't say that it's just a rumor that's coming out of him. He says that is new hardware, so you can't really think it's new accessories. I am thinking kind of along the lines of how, you know, you have the Xbox One, the Xbox One S, you have your Xbox at One X, and then you have your PS4, PS4 Slim, PS4 Pro. So is it a Switch Pro? Switch enhanced? I, I'm not too sure. I, I can assume. I don't think it's going to be the next generation of the Nintendo at all. I just think it's going to be a, a slightly more powerful version of the Switch. Maybe. I'm not sure that's that's just my prediction. That's my guesses because it's just way too soon to be announcing anything new with console wise. That's it. Switch is still fire. Like lo people love it. It's still selling really well. So I, I, it wouldn't make any sense. But we shall see. And maybe I'll buy that one eventually if I can afford it ever. Grand Theft Auto 4, losing some licensed music, which isn't, which isn't something that's, you know, new in concept. I mean, Harmonix has had to remove songs from the, like, their download and their playlist once they lost the license for it. But there are still people who are enjoying Grand Theft Auto 4. And uh, usually Rockstar will sign, like, a 10-year license. And it's so crazy to think that it's already hitting that. So as of April 28th, I believe there will be some songs that will be removed from the radio PlayStation on Grand Theft Auto 4. It does not give a list about which those songs are. But if you happen to still be playing it and you find some music is missing, that is why. If you want, if you know another Switch is coming out, would you wait to buy one? Yes, I would. I, I really would. I, I might as well. And even even then, it's, I, I don't know if I'd buy exactly the day one. I'd buy the, the more expensive one. Kind of like um, if I didn't own an Xbox right now, I would buy the Xbox One X. If I don't think I'd buy the one model for it. Even though I, it makes sense that the, the normal Switch would probably drop down in price, I would. I'd invest in the more powerful one. If, it, if that's what they're leading towards so ninja theory has announced that there'll be update oh, updating oh my goodness i cannot read ninja theory has announced that they'll be donating upwards of fifty thousand dollars to mental health america depending whether the sales of the xbox one version of hellblade hits a certain thresholds i think this is awesome this is like them putting their money where they're in their mouth is uh ninja theory um to give you an update, did develop the game Hellblade, which is all about psychosis and and, and mental hit health issues, and that's what the character is based on. And it was a great game. We did review it here. I I loved it. I loved watching the documentary on it, on creating this, and the work that they put into it. And the fact that it was a very small studio that created this game, it was it was great. So. Um, in celebration of this, well, I call it as a celebration um, because they are coming to the Xbox One. Um, I believe they have several different uh, milestones that they have set. So if it's, it's not like, oh, they don't meet it, they don't get any money. There is some money that is being uh, donated towards the mental health of America. And it, it's to the point where I like the game enough that I will go and buy. I will double dip and I will buy it on Xbox One. Because that's how great of a game it is. That's how much I support it. And, and and I love this studio. So if you haven't been able to play it or try it yet. I highly recommend that game as well too. I would actually recommend Hellblade. To buy and play that first. Before a way out. That's where I'm at with that. <clears throat> and then Iconoclast. Excellent. Uh, 
Metroid-inspired platformer that released on PC, uh, PS4, and Vita earlier this year will be coming to the Switch with a few extra additions. Uh, this game I haven't personally played myself. Um, it is a nice, really cute, colorful uh, platformer. Very Metroidvania and inspired. It's obvious. It's in there. And if that's your type of game, definitely go and check it out. Then next, which is funny because this is this is something that Andrew would love to talk about because he he has been going crazy over this game. So Yakuza, it's uh it today is April fifteenth. It's going to be releasing in a couple days, April seventeenth. And I kind of like how studios are going with marketing. That's like these little short films. You saw it out of Far Cry Five with um Eden's Gate, which I finally got to watch, and that was actually really cool, really well produced so yakuza is doing this too now um let me go and start this up they're making these like three minute live action yakuza shorts that were actually like it was really fun to watch them it's really they were really quick to watch so it's it's basically going through these different storylines of these three different characters who came um Oh, I just drew a huge blank right now. Um, Hiryu-san. Um, Kazuma. There it is. I came across Kazuma before and how it, it changed and affected their life. And it's basically, it's past characters from previous in the series. And I don't know the full history behind like all the other previous games, but this one sounds really interesting because you, you kind of get the sense that he's done some amazing things some really good things and it's changed these people's lives. And so you have uh, the first one of Stories of the Dragon. You have chapter one, The Bouncer. Uh, chapter two, Another Haruka. And The Prodigal Son. Uh, they're currently available on YouTube right now that you can watch. And like I said, they're really quick little videos. Uh, also really well made. And it, it just adds adds to their storyline very differently. I, I like this marketing scheme that some, you know, studios are picking up on because it's just a different layer of interaction to myself because video games are obviously very digital and I am a fan of anything that's like full motion live videos that adds to it that kind of brings these digital characters to this physical ground and you get to watch it. It's, it's awesome and it's a lot of fun. So... And you know what's funny is that for the Yakuza series, I've never really been interested in playing it. And I hear Andrew like just talking about it and tell me how much he's, he's done. He's, just, he's such a huge fan. Um, it sounds like for me, it's like, okay, that's cool. And maybe I'll get around to playing it one day. Seeing these and, and having this marketed that way actually as a consumer draws me more towards it. It actually helps me drive me forward. Same thing with the Far Cry series. I've never really cared for the Far Cry series, but watching that 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 thirty minute video, I want to know more. I need to know more. So, just definitely go and check it out on YouTube if you haven't. Yakuza Six: The Song of Life coming out on April seventeenth, which is in two days. Let's see. Moving on. Um, Ubisoft's latest update for Division, known as Update 1.8.1, has now released on Xbox One, PS4, and PC, bringing with it a range of tweaks and additions, including two new global events and 4K support for the Xbox One X. Um, this is another game, another series that uh, Andrew has actually been revisiting because he's been a little bit let down with the way that Destiny has been going and like their updates have been getting a little bit better we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on but he's been revisiting the division and division is just one of those one of those series that had a very weak starting point and has been getting better with the updates that they've been coming on and it's just pulling their uh their players back again so let's see there are two global events so global event number five is blackout uh, blackout basically is always active. Agents are equipped with shock ammo that stuns enemies. Shooting and running 
um, builds your charge meter, and the more charge, the more damage you inflict. It also has extreme blackout, which is a blackout be behavior, plus you can instantly kill enemies with overcharged melee attacks, but if you miss, you will stun yourself and your allies. And then total blackout, which is extreme blackout behavior, plus your charge meter will cool down faster when close to other group members. Here on a desert island, you can take one game with you and play what... What do you take? I got. I'll. I'll get back to you on that one. Try. I'll get back to you on that one. I gotta think about this. Uh, global event number six. Onslaught. Onslaught is always active. Um, deal burn, bleed, and gas effects to enemies in addition to normal damage. You reload to change the effect. The savage onslaught um, has onslaught behavior. Enemies are vulnerable to one effect type and resist others. And agents take increased damage from resistant enemies. And the Brutal Onslaught, Savage Onslaught Behavior, plus when two or more of your group members kill a vulnerable enemy within two seconds, each member can reload to gain a damage bonus for a single clip. So you have a couple of things to be looking forward to, um, as well as like 40, over 40 new commendations unlockable in the new global events, uh, new difficulty mesh, uh, missions. So, yeah, I mean, just division, it just took division a little bit of some time to build up that momentum, but the audience is still there and people are still enjoying it. <sighs> this next one, I don't know how I feel about it. So Drake is willing to rap about Fortnite if Epic makes a hotline bling emote. And I'm going to be honest about this. If, if they make this hotline bling emote, it might be the most bought emo in their entire item shop i'm not even joking there's people who like go crazy and they buy you know they won't necessarily buy every single one but they buy a lot if they make this happen i i i, I highly think that everybody's gonna want to own it i mean i didn't really care for the emo but at the same time i can't say i wouldn't buy it either <laughs> it's just it's just really silly i i enjoy all this stuff and, and considering that fortnite has had their um I, I think they might have finished it already but they had their boogie down event which people were submitting uh clips of them dancing to hopefully make it a new emo because if you haven't noticed a lot of their dancing emotes have come uh from other things you've seen it from scrubs you've seen it from uh will smith of carlton uh they're inspired by other things that you can relate to. So people are getting into it. I think that may possibly it. I don't know if I really want a rap about Fortnite. Yet alone a rap about Fortnite from Drake. I'm not exactly a fan of his songs. I think the only thing that I like that he's done was I think in God's Plan. There's one line in there because I'm a mom. Um, he says something like she asked me if she loves me and I said kind of I only love I'm really bad at quoting things here, as you can tell. Um, I only love my bed and my mom. <laughs> I'm like, damn straight. I look at my son every single time when that, that line comes on. It's like, you better only love me in your bed. That's it. Kidding. But yeah, I don't, I don't really know if I would want to have... I'm not against rap about Fortnite. I just don't know if I would want it to come from Drake. That's kind of it. It's, I don't know. I have no clue. Um, Destiny's 2 updated road map. So the com community has been talking on, um, a lot about some of the things that they're developing for Season 4. And the goals for these features are to give, uh, give people more control over how they configure their loadouts in Destiny 2. And give them more reason to play the game over time. They also want to bring back those exciting moments when you acquire the perfect weapon. And to make this happen, updates like the weapon randomization, weapon slot changes, and gear collections and records will be all delivered to players um we they also have a plan for the rage prestige and change including the raid layers i'll update where it will land and the next development roadmap uh, some mod changes are being incorporated into their new plan for the weapon customization and i believe on may 8th of the beginning of season three they're also launching the second expansion to destiny 2 it's called Warmind. It will send you to new places to meet new heroes and battle new enemies. And you'll earn new loot as well as master new activities. Uh, today, that's when they, they named it and they're giving it a date. And they'll have a reveal stream that's coming up on April 24th. If you want to find out any more information about that, uh, that's when it'll be. Wow. 
I have like the noise gate on my on, on my mic set pretty high. This rain is like picking it. Like my mic is picking up on this rain. I'm I, I'm not forgetting your question there, Try. I'm trying to think of like what game, what one game would I want to be live with on the. Am I on this deserted island by myself? Are there other people deserted with me? I guess that's like one question I'm just curious about. All right. So this past Tuesday, uh, Microsoft had their Xbox Insider uh, premiere. They announced a couple cool new things that are happening. Let me go and bring that up real quick. So a lot of that, the biggest thing from the Xbox Insider has definitely got to do with the Xbox backwards compatibility. Which they are bringing some games for the original Xbox game. So a releasing for the Xbox, original Xbox games that will be coming out for backwards compatibility on April 17th. Um, you can see Blinks, the Time Sweeper Breakdown. Oh, the Time Sweeper. Breakdown, uh, Conquer, Live and Reloaded, The Elder Scrolls 3, Maromine, Hunter the Reckoning, Jade Empire, Panzer Dragoon Orta, and SSX3. Uh, original games continuing on that list because there's, there's not just that. I think there's 19 overall original Xbox games that are coming out for backwards compatibility. They're just breaking it up. So the second set will be coming out on April 26th, and that will include Destroy All Humans. Uh, Full Spectrum Warrior, Mercenaries, Playground of Destruction, MX Unleash, and in Europe only, you're going to get uh, Panzer Elite Action, Fields of Glory. And then you have the Star Wars series where you have Star Wars Battlefront, uh, Battlefront 2, Jedi Knight, uh, Jedi Academy, Jedi Starfighter, and Knights of the Old Republic to the Sith Lords that will also be available. And oh, and the Republic Commando. So they really, really, really want you to play some Star Wars. If you're really, if that really is your thing. On top of their, uh, the other things that they announced, they also talked about Xbox Fan Fest for E3. Um, so here's something cool. Uh, Ghost Recon Wildland Season 2. They had a very special guest because they're going to be introducing Sam Fisher, who, again, will is the original voice for Sam Fisher. They also had uh, Michael Ironside on there to talk about it and to introduce uh, the new season. I thought that was actually really, really cool. Um, I can't remember which which one they that they changed the voice actor, but he is the original voice actor for Sam Fisher, so that's cool. So, yep, just you, not uh, not with friends. So, yeah, see if he's kind of a question. Ah. <laughs> uh, it's not a hard question. I'll come up with it. We'll see if I can come up with it before the end of this show. Um, they also talked about the PUBG. PUBG on top of there. They had Brendan Green and Dead Mouse on there to talk about PUBG on Xbox One. And that they will uh, there will be a free trial of the game for the Xbox Live Gold free play days beginning Thursday, April 19th. So if you haven't been able to try it yet, hopefully you can try it um, from that day forward. Fans will be able to play the Xbox preview version of the game, including all of the modes. You also get some new DLC for the game and some you know exclusive new clothes to customize your character if that's your thing. Uh, and I'll leave that for last. I'll leave that for last. So that those are my like pretty much my three highlights from the Xbox Insider thing there. Oh, and also there's a couple they did announce a couple of the Xbox 360 games that are getting the Xbox One enhanced um, treatment. So that would be Gears of War 2 and Portal 2. Uh, and you guys know that I'm a really really big Gears of War fan, so I think that's really cool. Even though I don't have an Xbox One. Um, X enhanced. It never hurts to ever go back. I don't mind replaying the stories over and over again. So I'm kind of curious about it, what it looks like with the enhanced version. Uh, on top of that, Red Dead Redemption, which is probably Rockstar's biggest game, possibly, maybe. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you think differently, but it will have a new shiny update for the Xbox One X. Um, owners because they'll be getting the 4k treatment which I saw the comparisons and it looks really really good even I, I don't even really like cowboys but I thought th those upgrades were really nice and I totally dug them so God of War creative director Corey Barlog uh, he <laughs> 
I thought this was cool. He wants to create an IP from scratch. So quoting him, I'd love to create something of my own, something that is truly coming from my original vision. He said that would be awesome, but you'll have to see if he can convince Sony on that one. I don't blame him. I mean, God of War is a great series. It's really fun. We have the we have the new one to look forward to in just a few days by the end of this week. I mean, sometimes you want to work on something different. You want to have that creative thing. After after working on a certain character, certain game, certain idea, and developing that for so long, you kind of want to spread out your creative rings and create something different as well too. So. Um, whatever he decides, whatever he makes, I look forward to it because God of War is just an amazing series and I look forward to playing this new one. Very, very much so. So this, this is kind of a, a big, big news because everybody thought that it was dead, it was done, it was no more. But 2K Studio is working on a new Bioshock whose code name is Parkside. Um, huh. I, I know it's, it's weird how I say that. Just it was such a, a a secret thing for them to have that people who were in on the secret project and this development couldn't even teach or teach tell their their coworkers. It was that secret. Somehow, obviously, there's always leaks that happen. There's always that one person that's got to blab their mouth about it. But I want to know what Parkside has to do with it. I, I always, always am interested about how secret code names are created. Because I want to know, like, is that a hint towards something that this game is about? Or, or is it something completely random like Android developers who just really like candy and sweets? I, I don't know. But they are working on a new Bioshock and I know a whole lot of people who are going to be super excited about this. Whatever it may be, I know that those super fans are already on board no matter what. Um, which is kind of amazing because like I said, they, we thought it was just done. That was kind of it. We thought it was done. So what to expect from the PlayStation 5? Speculations from the former PlayStation boss Andrew House. So the PS4 has been out for almost five years now. Really? Is that how long I had it? I guess that makes sense why mine might be dying. Um, industry speculation. Generally, generally, if you're going by the industry standards and the graphs and the charting and everything like that, you could expect a PlayStation 5. Not saying that it would be called a 5, but you know, it would just go along with this trend here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, you would expect that around 2020, 2021. But Mass Data Collection um, also shows that hardware companies leverage and ex try to extend the life of the pro uh, their products. In, in a pretty safe and manageable way that that works for them, works for consumers. But um, it is also predicted that even though a lot of people are going digital, they're going with downloads, they don't buy physical copies, discs will still be there. That is what is being predicted. That is not going anywhere. And I can understand that for a lot of reasons. Um, not everybody has a really great internet like me right now and my s storming weather. <laughs> It is like pouring outside. I can I can't it's like having a hard time focusing. I don't know. I'm sure that's coming across into the stream, but it is it is there it is storming outside. It's really bad. I'm gonna hate having to drive out into it later. But um it is it isn't going anywhere. It really is. And the whole disc version, the physical copies, because there's people who have really bad internet and they, they have to set their thing to download literally all day i mean granted even with a physical disc there is some download but can you imagine downloading the entire game that i i can't i can't um is it gonna have probably a lot of capability to streamline stuff of course obviously because eventually we will reach that point where having disc will be obsolete it just i don't see that and, and it was also predicted that that's not going anywhere anytime soon um it, it's Maybe in the PS5 Pro. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But uh, basically the whole streamlining thing is pretty much and trying to remove that and change that. It's kind of why the PS3 suffered in its own little way. We'll see how it goes. I'm not ready for it yet. I know that 2020, 2021 is only two, three years away. It's just not something I'm prepared 
four. And I am terrible because I forgot to turn this off and I'm playing talking about PlayStation and I have the Xbox Insider stuff still up. Oh my goodness. I am such a noob and I'm so bad. I am bad at my job. <laughs> oh man, okay, we only have a few more things to talk about and then I have to go and dust off my, um, my soapbox in a little bit. Let's see, what do we got? Oh, when can Sony truly deliver generational leap in power 2020? When was this added? I gotta go with that. Sorry, there's like a new note in there that I didn't realize that we had in here on our notes. When can Sony truly deliver generational leap in I can't, I can't read that. Oh, well, apparently one of our topics is PlayStation 5. When can Sony truly deliver a generational leap in power and what kind of specs can be realistically delivered? Um, that's a lot. That's a, that's a pretty heavy one to be, to be bringing up at the moment. Um, but if you actually want more information and the link to that article that was written on Eurogamer, we will find it into our show notes down below. And by going into my second review, isn't it great? You have one episode and two reviews. I actually got to play, uh, not that it was for free, it was available to everyone. Because if you, if you don't know, Boss Key Productions actually um, changed their, their game plan on Lawbreakers. And they, they have announced that it will be a free-to-play game now because they failed to reach the audience that they were hoping for. And according to uh, some, some statistics, that last month alone, um, they struggled. They struggled to get twenty, at least twenty-five current, current players. Twenty-five current, current players to play Lawbreakers last month. I'm pretty sure that's the definition of a dead game, and it sucks because that game has a lot of the a lot of possibilities that to it, and it, it was very promising for some people. Um, people either loved it or hate it. But right now, it's like that game didn't come out too long ago, and you're you struggles to get at least twenty five people playing concurrently. That's what one or two matches. It's really really sad. So they're transitioning over to having it a free to play game, and hopefully that changes it because they invested a lot of money, they invested a lot of time. They're not ready to give up on them, unlike you know, Epic, who just totally tossed out Paragon. Um, this is in nineteen. What did I say? 2019, 2020. Hi, Andrew. Um, so they're not giving up on it. But at the same time, during that time, they also announced that they were working on a new project. Um, when they originally announced that, they didn't mention what that project is. But like about four days after it, they announced that they were making their own 80s themed BR game. Which the BR genre is very, very quickly becoming very oversaturated. There is a lot that's happening. Hi, hundreds. Oh, the PS5 power is 2010, 19 to 2020. I didn't get to read that whole article. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. And hi, hundreds. Welcome. Okay, I think I know what the game is. Try now. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a no. I'm gonna finish my thoughts on this. We're gonna finish. We're gonna finish this on on boss key, and we're gonna get through this first. So, um, yeah, it's just I I I gave it a try. I did. I did play it. I did play Radical Heights. I did play Radical Heights, and it was very very interesting, and somewhat painful to play in a way. It, it was definitely something. Let's just say that. It was just definitely something. We're going to... I'm trying to dig do this. Being production and being... Push live. There we go. Um, their 80s theme BR is, is a weird mixture of PUBG-ish and, and Fortnite. Um, simply because... It, it kind of has the weird movements as you would have with PUBG. There is no building, obviously. But it's bright, it's colorful, and it's very cartoony like Fortnite is. Um, it's funny because on top of there, it's the only game I've ever played that says extreme early access. Now, when you play a game on Steam that is early access, you accept 
that there is going to be problems. There's going to be bugs. You're going to come across it because you know the game isn't complete. But this game, it says extreme early access, which is like a whole other level. It's in a... They tweeted out a picture that says, embrace the jank. And that's exactly how I describe this game to somebody. Janky. Because it is so incredibly bugged and, and incomplete. You're, there's like some buildings that they didn't even bother to put texturing on, on the walls whatsoever. It's like these gray blocks. And I picture it as this is what, this is what it looks like. When you want to walk through the back door, when you're Neo and you're walking through the back door of the Matrix, it's incomplete like this. Like in, in, the, in this one game footage right here, this I'm assuming is a grocery store, Costco, nothing on the shelves. It's just plain. It's boring. It has like the basic shapes of where things are going to go. And here you are playing it. Um, there was also plagued with a lot of bugs. Um, there's only currently available uh, solos and duos. There were no squads. Was not active. They said they would be adding it later as soon as they can have a little bit more stability into it. But people trying to, for duos were having a hard time getting into it. I think that was like the one aspect that I might have lucked out in as far as being able to get duos up and running smoothly for me. But I think every other game is like the loading screen to get into the lobby would freeze and you would have to restart the entire game. Um, the audio cues on it was very, very weird. It was very hard for me to adjust to it. Um, I know I'm, I'm not talking like so much so much crap about it but it's hard to say something positive about it visually and how smooth it, it plays when it's not a complete game and you you accept that they accepted that to me that just to me what it says to me is they're like really desperate to be making some money because they already had one game that failed and I feel like somebody up there higher in the chain this is all me just assumption this is my personal opinion this isn't what actually happened i have no proof about this at all but i feel like somebody high up into the chain is like no we're gonna put this game out just put it out because we don't have any money and you guys like wasted all this on lawbreakers i don't care what it is and it's like a weird cash grab um one of the first things before the game was actually uh, available on steam is that it did give off that impression that it was a pay to win type of game and that was all obviously people hate when they realize and start learning that it is pay to win because people don't have expendable money like that to just be dumping into games. Nobody does. Um, but they did change that. They said, like, oh, no, it, it wasn't like that. It's not like this. There is there is a paying factor, but it's supposed to be more for, for skins and clothing, which the clothing and character customization, it's plentiful and it's not at the same time. Um, there's no female characters as of yet. It says females coming soon. It doesn't state when. I don't expect it anytime soon. I apologize for the helicopter that you may or may not hear. We are having um, helivacs of rescuing people currently because it's flooding over here. But I am that dis dedicated to this job. <laughs> but um, there, there was no female character customizations, but there was a lot of options for the like, like 80s clothing, 80s hairdos, and as bright as it's very neon. It was kind of crazy. And it, it does give you the option where you don't have to... Sorry, I realize how loud that is. I can't even think for myself. Um, it does give you the option where you can buy gems i guess their money to to get these outfits or something I, I have to look into that because it's just it's too colorful to be looking into that uh, the shop store but uh you can earn in-game currency by playing the game as you can see you can pick up stuff um you can pick up items on the ground you can break into cash registers um to to steal the money out of there you also when you kill other players you get uh, so much amount of the money that they're carrying on them and then there's an atm machine that you can deposit your money into some off account uh bank account so that their outfits that you find throughout the world that you're exploring in you can actually buy them in game as part of your characters they are a little bit they are they cost a little bit much i think one of the shirts i wanted was like eleven thousand in-game currency but you also have the option to go and buy gems and 
uh there's just a lot but it doesn't have that feel after playing it i don't get that feel of the pay to win and i hope it stays with that um the biggest biggest difference there's two of them actually but the the very first one is very simple and i didn't think i would not wouldn't mind not having it is when you're dropping in there's no parachute none and you literally just like fall and then you're there you don't take any fall damage which i love so there's no fall damage and you just you drop in you get up and you run and you you're able to roll none of the other br games i've played has like this really cool action roll which is super great as a defensive move um or even offensive if you're really good enough but as a good defensive move uh when you're getting into those gunfights um that was a really nice change of difference on both aspects uh, and on top of that, <laughs> most BR games are really, really quiet games because you want to hear about what's happening around you. You want to hear those footsteps. You want to hear the direction that gunfires are coming in. This game is like doesn't even care about if you're trying to be quiet or not because there is a game show element within the game itself. And so you'll have the announcer, which you can adjust the volume if need be. They'll announce different things that are happening. So the loot drops, those things are announced when you have these loot drops. And they come in on some, on this thing that looks like a tram. It drops down. And then you have like a little mini game called Spin the Wheel. You show up, you spin the wheel, and then it drops out randomly whatever your loot is going to be. Uh, located throughout uh, throughout the map, there's like these little caves that you stand in there and it plays music and lights. It's really, really loud. So you're pretty much purposely drawing um, attention to yourself. And that that has different little goodies in top of there. There's also vetting machines that you can uh, use to purchase weapons. You can use it to purchase gear that makes its own little sound effects, which again not quiet at all so you, you you have to be very super careful with it because you're just you're just going to attract a fight to yourself and then oh wait third thing so the map the map itself i thought was it was a very cool interesting concept and i totally dig um first off when you're dropping in the map looks like a movie set that's kind of what it is, a very Hollywood movie set, which kind of makes sense because you have radicals sitting up, the word radical sitting up on the hillside, kind of like the Hollywood signs. Um, so it looks like a movie set. There's some things like there's uh, like scaffoldings and these holding up these sets. And I guess that kind of like made sense. And, and generally the entire map doesn't make sense for the themes. Or if it wasn't a movie set, then it just doesn't make sense if it wasn't that makes sense out of me i don't i'm not sure if that makes sense out of me but the biggest takeaway from the map is so you not only do you have a circle you kind of have like the like the hunger games or the actual movie battle royale well you'll have different grids that will if there, there's going to be something happening so you can actually if you're in that grid you can actually take damage if after a certain timer you're still in it and then on top of that, you have the circle and it's all randomly. And what I, what I loved about it is that it forces people to engage in a fight. It doesn't encourage camping. It doesn't encourage you just like, oh, we're in the circle. I'm going to stay inside this building and hide. And I'm just going to watch and like sock people. No, this one encourages you to keep moving and, and get into those fights. Which leads into like the ending top 10 situation towards when like the circle is small enough. There's going to be on the grid, there's going to be a certain point where uh, this shootout stage is going to be centered and you have to make your way to that point. And it has lights and cameras and this giant screen of what's going on and you just, just fight it out right there. I thought that was really cool. Uh, it definitely reminds me of the movie The Running Man, if you haven't watched that yet. So it's like The Running Man Brought to Life, which makes sense because that's also from the 80s. And a really good movie. It's it's so it's so bizarre. Uh, the only means of uh, transportation is a bicycle. Which, that is kind of janky in itself because the bicycle sometimes spawns like in midair. Sometimes it's like half under the ground, but you can still access it. 
I don't know. Overall thoughts, I can't really, I, I don't think it's a fair thing if I give a full review score on a game that is not anywhere near being complete whatsoever. Uh, I do, <sighs> initial impressions is basically, it's very promising. I don't know if I want another BR game. It's a very oversaturated genre, but everybody's trying to get in on it. And there's a lot of memes going on about, you know, possible BR games that could happen i will be paying attention to this one i think i think it's very cute i think I, I like the the whole 80s element onto it because it's very different to what's available now but how long it takes for them to get their stuff together to create a very visually appealing and smooth game i don't know how long that's going to take them I hopefully they'll be able to get it before you know the br craze dies out if it does die out I, I mean i'm sure that it'll be around for a bit but right now just like fortnite and PUBG are, are owning that territory so uh radical heights definitely needs to 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 improve upon what they have that's different from them because i think it's a very nice welcome change so we we shall see we shall see. And if you guys um if you guys were able to try it and check it out, I'm kinda curious. I did have a couple friends who did accidentally purchase the founders edition of this. It is free on Steam. It is free, but there's some people who did a search of it and they they thought it was a required payment because there is a, a optional DLC founders pack for this that's fifteen dollars. Don't get that one. There is a free version that literally says free to play. So hopefully you go and find that. Um, if you gotta give it a try, you know, let me know. See, it's so bright and colorful there. Bright and colorful. Whew. Now, now comes, <laughs> now comes to this part here. Give me a second. I need to, I need to get something to drink. My throat is dry. I appreciate you guys being here and, and keeping me company. Uh, I hope I'm doing okay by hosting by myself. I know it's like a, it's a very kind of one-sided conversation. I usually have Andrew here to we can bounce each ideas off of each other and opinions, and it's always great to have that. But doing all the talking, I throw it hurts. I don't know how you did this for 340 episodes, Andrew. <laughs> This is a new skill, but I'm very, very proud of myself for being able to do this. So, I'm going to dust off my, uh, oh wait, no, I got one more topic. One more talking before my, my, uh, my stuffs. Before I bring out my, my stool. My s uh, so one of the updates from the Xbox Insider was the video of Overkill's or the trailer, the gameplay trailer introducing Maya for Overkill's The Walking Dead. And that was a very, uh, very interesting, like, story overall. Oh, man. Did I put it in there? I hope I did put it in there. I did. Oh, man. I was smart. I did stuffs. So, the video is introducing Maya. In the first gameplay trailer of Overkill's The Walking Dead, they, we were introduced to Aiden. So this one takes on Maya, which is an Asian character which I, I love. I would automatically choose her in this game, which is supposedly going to be a four-player co-op. That it, it kind of reminds me kind of like a Dead Island there. It's almost a similar thing. But visually, this thing is really, really cool. So you see Maya starting off as like this doctor who, as you know, doctors are meant to save lives and it goes through showing her with her her colleague you know trying to defend themselves and <laughs> just go there. thank you try um uh trying to defend themselves and just making it out alive and that leads into her having to take a life that just that goes against the the core values of what a doctor is, which is saving, saving lives. And to see where she, she was at in, in, in this short span of this gameplay trailer. And to see where she's at, like, I love as far as terms of developing that storyline. Um, obviously because she is a doctor, I'm assuming that her role would be a medic. 
I mean, that's kind of a dead giveaway, right? <laughs> let's, let, let's just sit here and watch this. I don't have any audio for this, but just to watch it. Like, look how look how nice this game looks. I know that if you're if you're I say that so badly. I know if you're listening to this after the fact, you can't watch it with me, but definitely go and check it out. It's available on Skybound's um, YouTube channel. And it will also be located in our notes on the show radio at theshowradio.info. It, it always leads games like this and that trailer. Obviously, the very, your very first thought is going to be like how if, if that was to happen to you, if you're put into those zombie apocalypse apocalypse situation there how much you would change like you can see that in the walking dead how from season one to to now how much every character has changed to who they were in pre-zombie walker life to what they are now it's like you have to just toughen yourself up you have to change you have to adapt to the world that you're in so <sighs> which I know I'm talking about The Walking Dead and I'm so I'm so far behind on, on the TV series itself and I'm just magically somehow navigating not seeing spoilers it doesn't mean please send me spoilers though but I do like that the video game itself and as far as I can tell um, the video game itself and the TV series aren't directly tied in like I don't think there's anything that would bring into where you know Rick Rick is in the crew. Although it would be kind of cool if there's some kind of Easter egg in there that has some kind of tie back to the show. That would be actually really cool. If not, then it would be Fear the Walking Dead. Um, which, speaking of Fear the Walking Dead, that's a really good thing. Sorry, my throat is dry. Um, I like how this game's approach is a little bit of a mixture of kind of both. So, Fear the Walking Dead is how it it's initially starts off taking place. Um, right as that the zombie walking virus started, whereas The Walking Dead already just throws you into it. This is like a mixture of them both. At least from what I can tell from the trailers. And <sighs> they do such a good job. I really do. Um, of, of introducing those in the gameplays. And, you know, I was just thinking about like the Yakuza one. If they did it in a live action one, but I still feel the same way. Like, how would that impact me? It would be really cool. But uh, Overkill's The Walking Dead will be coming out later on this year. It's going to be a four-player co-op. And I'm just curious if you guys would be getting that as well, too. Oh, now it's my last topic and I can go and get on my sub disc. Oh, boy. You know what's funny? is like I'm talking by myself and this is still almost like two hours long. Isn't that amazing? Um, all right. How do I, I don't even know how to bring this topic in. Really, really don't. I realize I don't think I have. We're going to do this live and on the fly here because I'm really. I didn't realize that I didn't add it to, to the notes. I did and I didn't add it. It's on there. So this past Thursday. Thursday? No, this started even before that. So a couple weeks ago, I saw this this advertisement, I guess, tweet called Bully Hunters. And uh, one of the a female streamer that I happen to follow. I don't know her personally, but I happen to like what she does. Uh, Zombie Unicorn, also known as Natalie, uh, put out this tweet asking about women who... Were sexually harassed, and uh, on game, uh, whether it be in stream or, or video games, and if you would like to help, put a spot stop to it. Pretty much, obviously, me. I'm a huge advocate of anti-bullying, anti-harassment, and women empowerment. I am very proud that I can say I am a feminist. Um, doesn't mean I hate men. I just ask for equality. That's that's where my stance are. So obviously, I, I replied back. I was like, yeah, of course. I want more information. I want to know, you know, what can I do? What can I help? Like, what what is it that I can do to help for this along? So I ended up getting a DM from this account called Bully Hunters. And they sent me some, some in, in for information. 
and it sounded weird to me. Like something about it just seemed wrong. And I figured I'll just listen. So, but what they were lo uh, looking for was basically if you want to help spread the word about this campaign that they're putting together and uh, and tune in to watch their live stream on Twitch and on Facebook that happened on the 12th. So I just decided I didn't know much about this organization. I didn't hear anything about this prior to it. Just funny because some unicorn is actually like the face of she, she was a spokesperson for this organization. And that was the first time I ever seen her tweet about it. And it was like two weeks, a week and a half or so before it was supposed to air. So I'm like, this is new. I'll just keep tabs on it. and I'll pay attention because what it was advertising was was vague to me. It didn't make sense. And it just kind of. I don't know, just my gut feeling said something's off about it, essentially. So come Thursday, um, obviously, I'm like, let me say, obviously, I, I always hope for the best. So that's why I pay attention to it. I want to see where it goes, because anything that reduces the harassment that anybody faces it doesn't have to necessarily be a woman because men can men are harassed on Twitch as well. Maybe not equally as much as women are, but they still are. And their concerns, um, their concerns are just as valid as any woman. I don't, I don't think there's, there's is any less than, than mine. So you don't trust it. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a story. If you don't know the story, try, I'm going to go into this. We're going to be on this topic right here for a little bit. Um, if you think there's something fishy about it, don't inquire. Don't inquire in it. No, I'm gonna inquire. I don't. I don't. I don't make judgments uh, based off of just that because I can be wrong too. I can always be wrong. And when it comes to something that an organization or a movement that's trying to stop something that I want to stop, I'm going to still follow up on it because I want that. I want that no matter no matter what shape or form it comes in. Um, what was fishy about it was that the way that they were implementing it was vague to me, and if sounded weird and I I didn't agree with it if it was what my gut was thinking I didn't agree with it so um come Thursday I tuned in to their their live event that was streamed on Twitch and on Facebook let me just bring up the video for you guys you know because I have a video <laughs> I have the video captured so we're gonna I'm gonna have this playing on repeat as we talk about this it was the cringiest thing I've ever watched in my life. It was absolutely cringy. It was terrible. <laughs> and I thought it was a joke. So. Zombie unicorn. I don't know her personally, but I have nothing personally against her. Okay. Okay. She starts it off, she was stuttering over her words, which I stutter over my words, but her hers was more a lack of energy. It was a lack of enthusiasm. It was almost robotic in a sense. And it was it, it lacked any any heart that she wanted to do this. Like, it just seemed, it, she gave me the initial impression that I got was, I'm doing this for the money, and I get to put my name out there. I don't really care. So, Bully Hunters, they first they introduced it as this online tool that you connect your Steam account, and currently, it's only supporting games for CSGO. And supposedly you link up your, your Twitch account, or not your Twitch account, your Steam account, I'm sorry. And that if you're facing harassment or somebody is bullying you in game, you can open up their tool and call in a bully hunter that will jump into your game and kill the guy that is harassing you in game one time, leave their calling card in the text chat, and then... That's it. What? <laughs> How does that stop harassment? How does that stop bullying? It doesn't. That was the dumbest idea I've ever heard. 
dumbest, dumbest tool I've ever thought anybody has ever tried to think. So that's, that's how I was feeling. And so she's, uh, she's opening this up. She comes in. And so she look. it looks like she's like in like this land party, basically what it is. And she has like these two different computer setups separated and she's like oh and this is our casual gamers that represents uh, gamers like you and I like what and they're like oh and these are our elite pro gamers that are our bully hunters that are separate thanks helicopter these are our pro and elite gamers that are separate from are casual gamers and they, they they're gonna be called upon and they will be playing throughout the game and hopefully maybe we'll see some harassment that goes on <laughs> and I was like my brain wanted to explode and mind you this was I don't know this was within the first 10 minutes of it starting and then they had he had all of these brands that were just like Showing up in their advertising, you had Steel Series, you had Vertigear, you had Cyberpower advertising their stuff, and worst of all, um, Steel Series um, had some headsets that were. Yeah, you can see it. I have the I have the audio. I have a video playing right now. The audio is mute, muted, but apparently that's the kind of harassment that women face. But um, that had some headsets that had the brand, the Bully Hunters logo on it, and that proceeds were going to be given to charity for people who suffer from in-game harassment. I don't even know how you delegate money or there's a charity for that because that is absolutely amusing to me. If there is a charity for it, I would love to be a part of it. Not for the money, but more to help raise money for it. Um, Thank you for the follow, Clyde Guy. And... There's just so much. There's so much wrong with this. Um, they did have some quote unquote experts that came in to talk about harassment and how it affects men and women psychologically and that how this tool would help them and that how boys are raised to not not be acting like a girl like they're raised and trained to have that mentality that they should act like they're better than women and to maintain their manliness i suppose and that from third grade boys are or their i guess parents or people in general are less affectionate to boys from third grade i don't know they should meet my son my son is a total like mama's boy i know a lot of mama's boys I know some like straight up G's that are mama's boys. So I don't know what that has to do with it. I mean, again, I'm sure there is some follows behind it. I'm sure there's a lot that is behind that psychologically. But um, because I don't experience that, I just, I, it's, it's not clicking with me personally. So what the, the information that they had that, that these experts came on, it seemed to make sense. And it was good. It was good to have them on there. But it was how they were showing this harassment that was going on. And at one point of the show, they had like the, the lights dimmed down. Literally, the lights dimmed down. And then they had these red lights. Oh, somebody's being harassed. Let's tune in. What? <laughs> and so you have like, you have somebody who's supposedly being harassed and and having these really crude things being said to them apparently they're all capturing it and they're going to show you how their tool is going to help and and do their anti-bullying thing by leaving a cast like calling card which is harassment isn't a game bullyhunters.org <sighs> trying so hard not to be so heated about this Believe me, my, my opinions have changed. Just, just stick through with this on me. I, I have a whole whole thing about it. Try and just give you guys a foundation about where this all came from. But they, they supposedly said that this was all live. That this was all filmed live. I believe that um, the interview portions, the introductions, everything like that, um, that was all live. The gameplay footage... The, the audio that they, they captured of this harasser, that was not live. I don't care what anybody says. It is very 
very obvious to the thousands and thousands of people who turned in to watch that this was not live. Um, the harasser's voice for both instances um, and for uh, for their marketing videos that they had available, they're all the same voices. It's all the same man. Are you going to tell me there's one man that's harassing all? All of these women? No, I don't think so. But it's the same audio. Audio is, is the same exact man. Same exact thing. There was no difference in the changes of voices. I understand that there are uh, voice changers that are available that some people use. Um, not every single harasser is going to bother. Nobody cares. If you're, if you're a jerk online, if you're not going to take the time to do and change your voice unless you're just that extra jerk. Um, Yes, it was very, very theatrical. It was very ridiculous, as you can see in this video here. But 177 is joining. Um, which, if you know, if you ever played CSGO, you do know that you can only join a game in, um, in session if it was a casual game. So this does not even apply to, to ranked games whatsoever. But um, they, they even included some highlight videos like, oh, and this is of the highlights of the harassment that happened today. And... That was obvious. That was actually a pre-made video. Same with the uh, supposed highlights of harassers from that day. Granted, this was a 35-minute stream. And you're going to tell me that those highlights happened in that 35-minute stream? I'm sure right now somebody is being harassed. But you're going to tell me that you created a highlight video clip along with audio bites live from t that day? Nah, bruh. I don't believe it. It, it was it was absolutely r ridiculous. And then it's not that it even got worse. So people tuned in to watch this, mind you. And then on Twitch, on Twitch itself, people were sitting in the chat room like three, four hours before the live broadcast started. And you had really jerk people. You had your normal trolls that were in there. But there's people, a lot more people who turned in because they knew what a train wreck this was going to be. And they wanted to just watch it. They just wanted to watch it implode. I don't blame them. I don't. There were articles of about talking about how terrible idea this was going to be that day before it even happened. So you can you can get where it's going to be. So there's a lot of people obviously that were like me that was hopeful that Whatever idea that you initially thought it was going to be, you were hoping that it was going to be different. No, it was exactly as bad as you thought it was going to be. And then worse. So everybody is taking it off that it was a very huge marketing ploy. It was used to make money for these headsets. And the internet is not nice. Everybody must know that. The internet is not nice. Neither does the internet forget and the internet, when I say the internet, I'm not talking about the physical internet. I'm talking about the people who live there. I'm talking about you and me. I'm talking about every single user. The internet has, can do better research than some crazy ex-girlfriend that you have that probably could figure out what you ate on August 7th of 1991. Okay? <laughs> so shortly after... It ended, and probably even during the airing of this, a lot of people um, started digging up some stuff on Zombie Unicorn. And some of it, one of the clips I watched, was actually something that was taken out of context. And let me start off with this. I, my initial impression, I was very, I was very disappointed because, again, I don't know Zombie Unicorn personally, but I follow her because I think she she does amazing work. I love her as a, watching her casually as a streamer, and I think she's a very strong advocate on you know diversity, and she's a very strong a supporter of the LGBTQ community, and she's a very strong, thick-skinned woman. She speaks her mind, and that's very admirable to have. But to have her be a part of this is kind of less a very sour taste in my mouth like come on come on seriously and then you start seeing these different um video posts so there's a one clip where she uh she says an f-bomb 
And it's not the the four letter F bomb. It's it's the one that the LGBTQ community doesn't really necessarily like. And it's like a sixteen second clip or so of her saying that about somebody and it was her live on stream about six years ago. Six years, okay? Uh, everyone has one of those crazy exes. Yeah, everybody does. And so for some people that crazy ex is the entire internet. But yeah, so it, it, it shows that and her calling out somebody and calling them an effin and so long with the F word. I don't use that word. I don't use <clears throat> uh, but they took it out of context because they used it her as hers, like, oh, Steel Series and then so and so, you're gonna have this bully as your spokesperson, you know? And it made her look really, really bad. And when I saw that initially, I was like, oh my God, seriously? And then people started digging up, you know, tweets from like December of 2017 of some her like calling somebody another C word. And and I'm trying to keep this PG. <laughs> but she was just making these really bad degrading remarks to people even on Twitter. And, you know, they're calling her out this. And like, how can you be, you know, advocate anti-harassment, anti-bullying when you say these to these people? Um, for the YouTube clip one, that one, I actually got to watch what happens before it. And although I don't condone her using necessarily those words, there was a reason behind that. She was, uh, I think for that, her stream during that time for hour plus before that, she was being trolled and griefed by a notorious 4chan, um, uh, YouTuber. That was just, I'm assuming at that time was stream sniping her and just killing her over and over and over and again. She could not enjoy the game and she tried to be a good sport about it. She tried to, you know, play it off and be cool, but it was ruining her gaming experience. It was ruining her stream. She couldn't enjoy it. She was just miserable to the point she gave up and she said those words in frustration and anger. And I can't necessarily not blame her for that. I've, I've, I've done such things and I've said some mean things, not necessarily like call, use that F word, but you know, I've cursed, I've gotten mad, I've gotten pissed at somebody who's going to ruin that. Everybody has, every gamer has, they get a pressure, you get mad. It's, it, it just happens and it sucks as part of our culture and that happens, but don't, don't be dissing on somebody and putting them down and taking their words out of context to harass them like that. And believe me, that, that clip was used a lot against her. Like, I, I felt bad being her phone for those notifications that were probably blowing up her stuff. And then um, there, the tweets that she sent to somebody also degrading them and telling, um, telling them off and such. Uh, from 2017, she, you know, she said she was in the wrong for this. And mind you, I did tune in yesterday she had a two-hour ama on her personal stream where people could straight up just ask her the questions right off the bat about her stance on this and she was just very open about it she was she she was very 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 incredibly open about it ask her anything she was very honest and i i believe she was very very honest but she admitted she's like look I, i'm human i make mistakes i do really dumb stuff i say really dumb stuff and I apologize for that profusely. And I have, I have been changing and I, as in her, uh, she has been changing and she's been working on that, improving herself, but doesn't mean that she is, has ever been for harassment. She has never been for bullying. She's never been for any of those things. She just, in those situations, she didn't handle them as well as she probably should have. It doesn't mean that she promoted it. And you know what I, I can also see from her point of view that as well you know we're all human we make mistakes we're not perfect and you should not ex expect anyone else to be we we do some things that probably we are embarrassed about and is very hurtful doesn't mean that we we intentionally do it to be harmful it doesn't mean that we necessarily support harassment so so there was that, and the, the other thing that was a huge, huge factor, um, there was a medical research expert that tweeted at her before the stream even started, 
asking her for statistics because it was stated that some odd three million women or something like that, three million here, women have claimed that they were harassed online and could not come back to gaming. Three million is a lot, a lot. And so basically with this researcher, which I thought was she was right. She had, she had every right in touch. She's like asking for the sources, asking to cite the work. And Natalie or zombie unicorn replied back to her stating that, you know, just tune in to the show today. We'll have some experts and, and more information on there then. Uh, research replied back to you like, I will be working. I won't be able to. And zombie unicorn replied back, well, you can check the VOD. So the researcher and everybody on the internet took this as, oh, you don't want to cite your work. You don't want to give us information. You don't want this. You're making up the numbers. You're making alternative facts. You know, they, they just assumed and took it as her, um, not wanting to give it up and being, you know, forcing people to go and watch this stuff to get more information. And then when that information wasn't given on, on the stream itself, that it was even worse for her because they're like, oh, look, I watch and you didn't even give me this information, blah, 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 blah. Well, as it turns out, as she stated, she's like, um, in her defense, which I completely agree with and I understand, is at that time that she was asked, she is only a face. She's only a spokesperson. She's not an expert in the matter. Um, she didn't have that information on her. She didn't have the links. She didn't, she knows she's not a professional in that. And uh, she's given the information that whoever's putting this, uh, this production on gave her. So she cannot give and provide information she doesn't have. So she can only tell them, it's like, hey, just tune in. I, there be some experts on there. You can ask them. What is she supposed to do if she doesn't have it, you know? And she, and it also goes to show that she wasn't hundred percent sure about the information that she was going to be presenting at the same time. So that, that acted against her and there, she received a lot of hate for it. But, um, with this statistic, the number was actually taken from a very small survey that was conducted and, um, <laughs> I think this, uh, this is absolutely terrible, um, marketing period, because it was a very small survey that was taken. And I think it was, uh, I want to say it was less than 900 women. And then there was a certain percentage of those women, which was 84, 84 women within this small survey that was conducted. 84 women have stated that they were harassed and they could not return and couldn't play games. So they quit 84. So that percentage that they had of that original huge survey they applied it to the entire female population and then they got that number three million so yeah that's not the way that it works <laughs> then and, and people called them out on that really really huge because obviously that is a fake fake fact that was just made up numbers right there nobody likes making up numbers they want facts so that that really did not help the cause and so after, after it was all said and it was all done, uh, Steel Series, uh, Vertigear, um, Diversity of Gaming Coalition, <sighs> I think Cyberpower PC uh, and, and Zombie Unicorn were drowned in so many tweets, so many messages of hate, of harassment, of just ridicule, non stop and I paid attention and I watched it and I didn't I didn't add to it I think there was one thing that I did I did comment on it but it ended up being since that it was a fake recording it didn't even apply but it, it was non-stop and normally um after after marketing brands will showcase something you know, you'll see it. You'll see them active on their Twitter. You'll say like, "Hey, thanks for like tuning in. Uh, for more information, visit X Y Z site." You know, you didn't hear any of that from any of the companies. I don't even think they knew how to reply or respond to it because people hated it so 
much. People trolled on it. People were breaking things down. People were tweeting about all their things about what they hate about Zombie Unicorn and how she's a terrible human being and finding every single flaw that they possibly could on her on them and shaming them for like oh you tried to make this marketing so you could have the money from these headsets how could you do that i'm never supporting you guys anymore um it was just it was just non-stop and friday all of these brands and organizations uh released several different statements from each of them that they they cut off any support for this and that they were sorry and that let me see if I can go and find some of these because I think they realize like this is possibly the biggest issue that they ever came across see let's let's read the diverse gaming coalition statement what I didn't like about each of their statements is they kind of threw zombie unicorn under the bus and I don't feel that she should have been. I don't think it was her fault. She's just the face. She wasn't, it's not, it wasn't her idea. Need water. <laughs> it wasn't her idea. So one of the statements from Diverse Gaming Coalition. I'll read out the whole thing. Um, at the end of 2017, we were approached by a marketing company who told us um, about an initiative with Steel Series to promote anti-bullying. This initiative would turn into what it is now known as Bully Hunters, which was a great project at first, and as it was described, aligned with our message. As the months went by, not much was said about the project until dates for a live stream were given to us. Leading up to this live stream, many things were unclear. But we put our faith in the hands of the coordinators to make this happen. Unfortunately, things turned sour before the live stream even happened. Various tweets show wrongdoings by host Zombie Unicorn, which are actions that Diverse Gaming Coalition does not condone, although she was not solely to blame for the Bully Hunters initiative as a whole. After the live stream, it seems the Bully Hunters is still an initiative they wish to keep pursuing. However, this initiative does not align with our mission and vision statement as a nonprofit. Because of this, we are deciding as of now, we are dropping as a partner from the Bully Hunters Initiative and we believe in our their intentions as a company to promote social good, but do not think they approached it in the best way possible. We will continue to advocate for anti-bullying as we have current and future initiatives in place to do so. Thank you for being an awesome community and we appreciate the support, feedback, and concerns you have brought to our attention. So... That is from the Diverse uh, Gaming Coalition, I believe. Steel Series also did, and they all, they all um, brought about very, very similar statements on this. So Steel Series, which is the biggest one, so everybody made the assumption that Steel Series was the money benefactor of putting it out and putting on this whole charade. That nobody was even digging. So let me let me let me look up something real quick. Okay. So um Steel Series statement on Bully Hunters basically is Bully Hunters pitched us with a simple idea. Let's work together to fight online harassment. And because we believe that's a noble cause, we supported it. It's now clear that we didn't do a good job in understanding exactly what we were supporting, and we're sorry for that. The way Bully Hunter represented the gaming community was wrong and disingenuous. Most gamers don't experience ha harassment, and more importantly, 99% of gamers don't do the harassing. Okay, I don't even understand how that statement is. Most gamers don't experience everybody by experience some type of harassment i don't know about this 99 percent though well we're well aware of the ma many faults with bully hunters we hear you guys and we agree to clear a few things up bully hunters was not a viral campaign staged managed by us we did not hire a marketing agency to create it we didn't have anything to do with this execution content or messaging 
And more importantly, we would never take advantage of an issue like bullying to sell hardware. They asked us to supply some headsets, support the call for positive change, and we did. Although we still believe in a world where harassment isn't tolerated, it's clear to us that Bully Hunters is hurting and not helping the cause. On Friday, we ended our support in partnership with the organization, and we apologize to those who support our brand and expect more due diligence in vetting out campaigns and partnerships we associate ourselves with. So, okay, that the only thing I have a problem with their thing is this one sentence, most gamers don't experience harassment and more importantly, 99% of gamers don't do the harassing. 99 plus percent? What? Well, who do you think is harassing us? The 1% that just turns on their console and jumps into random things and do nothing? They just camp in the corner that's harassing us? Like, no. Like, wh what? Whatever. But, um, all of them followed suit. They all issued their own statements. They all cut it off. Like, come Friday, they were no longer associated, wanted anything to do with Bully Hunters. Uh, Zombie Hunter was the very, uh, Zombie Hunter, Zombie Unicorn was the same exact way. She cut it off. She's in, she, um, she's not gonna, she's turning down any form or any type of payments. And as of, Say yesterday, yeah. As of yesterday morning, the website officially does not work. It is it, they they took it down. Um, I tuned in yesterday to listen to to Zombie Unicorn, and like I was saying earlier, initially I had a very strong disgust and like sour taste in my mouth because you you find out this information on her, and then everybody's going into it. I. I personally had to stop being subjective and, and and throwing my personal feelings into it and look at it from objective standpoint because this is still a woman like any other and here she is just like just having so much hate thrown at her. So I wanted to listen to her side of the story. That's the best way to ever listen to these things is to always hear from both sides. And so she had a like a two hour stream yesterday um, with her statements and then people could join and ask her questions. And she answered every single one. And I believe I truly believe she answered them very honestly and truthfully. So when she was brought on, she was brought on as a consultant and she gave her ideas and bully hunters was not her idea bully hunters was like a, a i guess in their brainstorming session there it was something that was proposed and she was very adamant that this isn't gonna work don't do this this is a bad idea the tool that she wanted to create would fell along the lines of something of like finding a thunder buddy in which, if you're feeling harassed, you can use a tool to find somebody to play a game with. Somebody that would be supportive of you or you guys can be supportive of each other. That if you're being harassed, like you can be able to call out the harasser and be like, dude, that's not fucking cool. And I realize it's just cursed. <laughs> um, dude, that's not cool. Or at least, you know, you can have like a private like party chat or something with the person that you're playing with. And, you know, you can build up friendships and, and a support system in that way. That makes sense to me. That I understand. That I believe in. And then after all these things and they, they assured her that's not the route that they were going to be going. That's not what they're going to be doing. Um, she was throwing a curveball. And then when it was coming close to this date and making things happen, they she finds out that this is what they were going with. Um, it fully explains why through her hosting here, she was just lacking that energy, this disinterest. There was no there was no passion for it. There was no um there's nothing from her. And I can understand that. I can see that now because I wouldn't want to stand behind something that's like, this isn't what I wanted. This is what I said, you guys. This is gonna go bad. And it sucks to be in that situation where you're like, oh my god, I'm here. I'm going to do this. This is going to blow up in my face. <laughs> like, how do you maintain a smile and, and maintain a good composure and energy levels when you can just feel like, yep. World's on fire around me. What am I going to do? 
So I applaud her for, for trying to get through that. And just, I don't think I would have the skin to, to deal with so much hateful messages. I know they're just words and they're just people on the internet, but having to hear it on repeat and then to have people tell you how terrible of a human being that you are, that's, that is very obvious that harassment is very true because those people didn't have to go through that. I didn't, even though I thought I disagreed with it and I hated it. I didn't go and reach out to these companies and brands. I didn't tweet at her and be like, Hey, you, you know, you like what you did was just dumb and selfish. It, it it wasn't. I didn't. I didn't say anything. That's a, just, just. You don't have to. But she does regret not stepping out when she probably should have, and she knows when she did, and she accepted that it was a mistake. Like she was very hopeful that something positive would come from it, and that it would be a topic conversation that people would acknowledge more often. And that's not what happened. And she, she admitted to her, her regulars, her community, that she is ashamed for it. And, you know, it was a mistake. And and she's aiming to correct it and to never never do that again. And she's not going to stop changing her, her push on, on anti-bullying. She's not going to stop on anti-harassment. She's going to still continue to be very supportive of, you know, the different various communities that she's a part of and that she supports. It doesn't change who she was. Um, overall, she was just very hopeful that this initiative would have worked out better, even though they she she didn't agree with what they originally had. And I don't think I think they were just gave it to her like last minute. And it's very, very obvious. Even her co-host, I don't believe like she starts off saying like she was she wasn't a gamer. She's a paid actor. That's what she is. I went to go look her up. I know that sounds really creepy soccer-ish, but I did. I had to find out, like, who is this person that's hosting with you that has nothing to do with gaming whatsoever? She's a paid actor. And um, as much as everybody wants to think that it's all of these different brands trying to make a buck off of it, all of them admitted that they didn't put any money into it. But the original um, people who were pushing for this, that who approached these companies, that approached her, was this uh, marketing firm called FCB Chicago. I don't even know what they have to do with gaming period, but it is a marketing firm. Like I want to go check out their website. It's <sighs> basically their about section says Barnum marketing requires an entirely new model. They are industry's largest startup, the oldest and newest advertising agency in Chicago founded in 1873 as Lord and Thomas and reintroduced as foot cone and building we created big transformative ideas that drive change and with over 700 employees they also have entrepreneurial spirit well whatever it is we're going to continue on they do not know anything about gaming they don't understand how this functions and and they would not listen as as having zombie unicorn natalie as as a consultant they didn't listen to a single thing that she even said her input and that frustrated her and she accepted that she probably should have stepped out for them if they weren't going to listen to what she was consulting and telling them. That was probably already a bad sign. So, I mean, I put into her chat when I was watching and I put into her chat that I was, even though she doesn't know, know me personally, and this is a very selfish thing on my part, um, I felt guilty for just having such, I don't want to say hate, but and I don't want to say disgust, but just ill ill feelings about what she did and how she approached it. Um, but it was great to hear from her side and 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 see how it all played in um, from her end, because you only get to see half the picture, and and most of that picture, most of that half, is filled with assumptions. So. Um, I also asked her about if she felt that harassment, um, well, in terms of harassment and bringing it about is that there's many communities. And as you all know, as listeners and viewers, I am a community manager for girl streamers and our huge thing is to always create a safe place for women, um, who have to deal with that type of harassment and to encourage them and to support them and help them grow and, and give them the tools that they need as well as provide a community so that they have this safe haven for them. 
And I asked Natalie if she, she felt for those types of communities, do you feel that Wooly Hunters had set back the progress that any of us have made in trying to change the stigma behind um, female streamers, female gamers? And to her, she she doesn't believe that because at least it is very obvious and then the information is out there and it's it's being talked about into some sense, even if it is in like kind of negatively seeing how bully hunters happen and came and came to be and at first like i thought it's i i thought my initial impression was like yeah this kind of set us back in the progress that we're trying to make but at the same time i get what she means in in the sense that it is something that is being talked about and it's very obvious and harassment happens to both men and women yeah it probably happens to women a whole lot more but it happens regardless and it's obvious. And if you if you even looked at any of her mentions and any of the tweets that she's put in, you will see those type of harassments and things like that are being said to her are said to to men and women online on their streams regularly. And it's is a daily thing. Do I believe that there is a way? Hi there, Dakota Lord. Um do I believe that there there should be a means or some way of having to deal with this? Yes, I do. Um, I believe that the initiative that a lot of studios are taking on dealing with toxicity um, in video games, in streams, is a very good change in that direction. Um, you see that with the changes in Twitch's terms of service. You'll, you'll see that in the banning um, that you have. For a lot of different games, there's a mute, there's a mute, and there's a, a report button for a reason. So you see that change is happening. Is it slow? Yeah, but it is still a change. Um, this bully hunter initiative, I it was absolutely frustrating to deal with, frustrating to watch, frustrating to listen, and that whoever in FCB Chicago decided that this was a good idea. I don't think you deserve your job. I don't, you should go and play some video games or something and go figure out how the internet works here because you don't get it. I don't know who you are, but you seriously do not get it. That your entire marketing firm does not understand it. And when you hire a consultant that's telling you that your dumb idea was not going to work and it's just going to go up in flames, you should probably listen. I don't even want to know how much money was wasted on this entire initiative. I, I just, it was infuriating. It was infuriating to listen. But for me, the way that I would want to have a resume deal, it's like, I can, I can talk from the female's perspective is that it is very hard and there are women, there are many women and, and, and being in a community with a thousand plus women who come in and they deal with being harassed. Like they're, they're just yesterday, somebody was being harassed and, and, it, it doesn't all have to be directly sexual. Um, some of them have some type of sexual nature behind them, but it's indirect. And, and there was a member in there who somebody was asking her to burp on stream and kept asking her and said how much he liked it. That is a different, weirdly indirect sexual harassment that is going to make any woman uncomfortable. It's unwelcomed. And she, and she felt like she could not stream on her own channel. It is her channel, it is her space, it is her page. And there's somebody that she does not know that makes her feel unwelcomed in her own space. That is, that is a form of harassment. And communities like Girl Streamers exist because the first thing that she did, she came in and... She, she told us the whole thing and she's like, I don't know what to do, I'm scared. Because I don't want him to come back and I can't get him to stop and he wouldn't stop. So I fit, I, I, le I finished my stream early and I, I left. And it is not our initiative. It's not our, our girl streamers initiative to bully or hunt down this other Twitch user to harass him and shoot him in game or anything like that. But it is our job to give women, to give members um, that power and that courage to to stand their ground, to know and to reinforce the idea like this is your safe place, this is yours, this is you, 
And you should never, ever have anybody make you feel any less than that. And it's just like, it, and it is as simple as just hitting that ban button, hitting the report button and, and, and ignoring them. That's it. Right now, that is all you can really do. I wish Twitch had a function that you could ban somebody and they couldn't watch your channel, period, anymore. But being able to remove them and seeing their messages in chat is one step forward to, to making them feel better. And yeah, those, those things are there. But there are people who will go that extra mile to, to harass people. It is. It's, it's, and it's building up that tools to, to help you know that you have the means to deal with it. And, and that's what I feel that we, we offer at girl streamers or in, in, in any community that builds that. And it doesn't even have to be girl streamers. It could be co-ed communities that are built simply off of positivity and, and creating a safe place. Uh, bully hunters definitely did it wrong and they should have at least reached out to those communities that are tailored and built for that specific reason of harassment. And they probably would have done a whole lot better and probably been a lot more welcoming. You can... <sighs> Until the internet learns how to change, there will always be some type of form of harassment. There is going to be some type of bullying. Um, but a part of that is some also knowing to know the difference. Because I can I can shit talk with the best of them and I can know that, you know, what what some people are saying is like simply because it's just like it's in the heat of the game. I'm not gonna take it personal. I know the difference. I do. But when it comes into the nature of it and and the intensity of it just some people aren't built for that and for me personally i am the type of person that i would rather take that type of harassment for somebody else who doesn't have as thick of a skin as i do like i i have very unique ways to dealing with trolls and it doesn't bother me it's not gonna hurt my feelings it's not gonna ruin my day if anything it just it's something for me to laugh at the messages that i get they turn into jokes because if <laughs> dick pics that were sent to me, you know what? I actually show them to my friends so that we can laugh at them. So if there's anybody ever watching me that's ever sent me an inappropriate photo, you can bet your you, you can bet that I shared it with my friends and my family to laugh at you. And you're the butt of our jokes, literally. Um, because they're not they're not welcomed, and there's some women who just don't know how to deal with it in that way, and it's always going to be something different. But if I can actually, you know, take some of that hate off of them, and so that one person can feel safer, I'd rather do that. But if I can also just be able to talk to them, and just make them feel like they have someone, because some people who are harassed, whether it be online or offline, regardless if they even know that thousands and thousands of of women. And, and men are harassed online, they always feel like they're, on, like they're the only one. Like it's just them and they don't know how to come out. They don't know how, how to ask for help. And I don't think that's necessarily on them. It's just the society that we lived in, we, we built up. But I can tell you, having a tool like Bully Hunters where you just call on somebody to come fight your battles to go and kill somebody and leave a really dumb calling card is not going to help with anti-harassment. If anything, that gives your troll, your harasser, even more ammo and your incentive of like, oh, I really got to them. I just want to make it worse. Like, they don't care if they get killed in the game. They really don't because most trolls and harassers are most of the times really crappy in the game that they're harassing you in. They just know that they can get to you. Not all of them were that really great. And the objective of CSGO is to shoot and kill each other. So what difference is it going to make if they just kill, get killed by one other person? It doesn't. It really, really doesn't. So going forward, you know, I am glad that this is a topic of conversation. I'm glad that it has some, something out there. I know it's currently absolutely negative. But there are people who are tweeting it's like hey if you're dealing with harassment let's just deal with it in a positive way and and it is so it's it's not something that's going to change overnight it's not something that a simple tool can make it's something that as a gamer as a streamer as a regular non-gamer that's it's just out in public you just 
have at least one friend. Have one friend that you can talk to. You can ask for help. If, if, whether, regardless if it's online or offline. And you're not alone. And if you ever feel like you're alone, you can hit me up on Twitter. You can hit me up on our Discord. I'm here. I'm always a strong advocate for that. I never ever want anybody to feel like alone. They have to deal with something terrible on their own. That they feel that it's just out of their control. And then that is where I'm going to get off of my soapbox. Because I said a lot of this. It is what it is. Bully Hunters is no more. Those organizations regret everything that they did to sign up for this. To be a part of it in any way, shape, or form. And they learned from it. Um, Zami Unicorn, I think, is a very, very incredibly strong woman. <laughs> I don't even know how she's dealing with that. I, I can deal with a lot of stuff. I really, really can. But... On her level, it's just crazy. She has people who know literally nothing about her that is throwing her hate. Um, I'm sure over, like, you'll die out soon. And Bully Hunters will be a thing that's going to be added to Know Your Meme. Because nobody took it seriously. Literally nobody took it seriously. <laughs> it never happened. <sighs> and that was, um, Yeah. That was our entire show for the show radio for episode 397. Here I thought it was going to be a very quick show because it was just me. But amazingly enough, it was just as long as one of our normal shows. How how crazy is that? But I had I had a lot to say on it and I really wanted to get that out. Um again, I'm not anti bullying i'm not anti that i'm not anti having some type of tool i just believe there's so many different ways to handle it um there's so many different types of communities that that spread that type of positivity and that type of support that i think we all individually need from time to time um maybe girl streamers might not be for you maybe there's going to be another one um but find find the community that that you feel speaks to you and that you can join and there's communities offline that are for that too it really is it locally for for anyone um i highly highly suggest it and if you ever just need a friend you know your girl danny here miss tgm i got you so <clears throat> i can't believe i still have any breath in me and that my throat is not dying over here I want to thank you to everybody who was able to tune in and 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 watch live and anybody who's downloading and listening to the show radio uh, right now. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for episode 307. Uh, make sure you add our skill on Alexa by going either visiting our website, the show radio info forward slash Alexa or saying Alexa, enable the show radio podcast. Uh, you can also hang out with us on Discord as well. We're on there. We're working on um, building up that community as well, which could also be the community that you help us build and grow for that positivity that we are even talking about for anti-harassment, anti-bullying. Um, you can check us out and, and join our server by visiting the showradio.info forward slash Discord. Um, if there's anything that you want to correct me on or if you have any tips or you have any questions or you have any input just on anything, you can email us community at the show radio dot info. Subscribe to us on your favorite podcatchers and you can just never miss a show from us uh, on you can do that by subscribing by the show radio the show radio dot info forward slash listen you can watch us on twitch and give us a follow there on twitch.tv the show radio live and for all of the notes. All of the notes that I spoke about on today's show and went into depth in, you can uh, check it out on our website at theshowradio.info. So thank you once again for joining me for episode 397, even though I had some technical difficulties with power outages and rains and thunderstorms that you probably heard throughout the show, which is kind of crazy. Um, I appreciate you. And I hope you guys, until the next one, See you guys on three, episode 398. Bye, guys.